according to airline spokesmen, they found that their planes were packed with too many, quote, greasy Italians. <laughs> Three years ago, an 11-year-old British schoolgirl put a message in a bottle and tossed it into the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this week, she was astounded to receive a reply from halfway around the world. Sadly, the reply read, You're 11? What are you wearing? <laughs> Update with Norm MacDonald. Thank you, I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news, our top story. Tonight, after a search of nearly 18 years, the man known as the Unabomber has apparently been caught. Theodore Kaczynski is described as a genius with degrees in mathematics from both Harvard and the University of Michigan. Well, now perhaps Americans can focus on our real enemy. Fancy book learning. <laughs> Although only one of his victims was from California, Governor Pete Wilson is pushing to have the Unabomber suspect tried in Los Angeles. Also pushing to have the Unabomber tried in Los Angeles, the Unabomber. <laughs> it now appears that the $50 million lawsuit against subway gunman Bernie Getz, brought by one of the men he shot, will be heard by an all-minority jury. Attorney for Getz, Darnay Hoffman, says he has advised his clients to carry himself humbly in court, make friendly eye contact with the all-minority jury, and start scraping together $50 million. <laughs> Last week on Larry King Live, Marlon Brando made the shocking statement that Hollywood is, quote, run by Jews. In response, outraged Jewish organizations made it snow in New York in April. <laughs> for years, Hillary Rodham Clinton has told people that she was named for the first man to climb Mount Everest, Sir Edmund Hillary. But as Esquire magazine recently pointed out, Sir Edmund did not climb Mount Everest until 1953, six years after Hillary was born. However, the First Lady does have a good explanation for the discrepancy. She loves to lie. <laughs> Rap star Hammer is suing the Los Angeles Police Department after he and his entourage were mistakenly handcuffed by police. The most shocking part of this story, Hammer has an entourage. <laughs> Last week, a jailbreak at the Adams County Prison in Pennsylvania ended with four inmates escaping in their underwear. Officials are surprised the escape worked, especially because during the break, the scantily clad prisoners frequently stopped to rape each other. In the new movie, Mrs. Winterbourne, talk show host Ricky Lake plays the part of a young mother-to-be. According to film's producers, Miss Lake was so serious about achieving a realistic pregnant look, she forced herself to lose 30 pounds. <laughs> In uh, Montel Williams' new book, Mountain, Get Out of My Way, the talk show host shares insights on how to set and achieve goals in life. Publishers expected to be a bestseller, outdoing even his first book, Hair Get Off of My Head. <laughs> a Nobel Prize winning scientist has been arrested on charges of sexually abusing a 15 year old boy. Though the arrest really shouldn't come as a big surprise, his Nobel Prize was in child molesting. <laughs> Finally, some good news. According to her doctor, legendary actress Katherine Hepburn is recovering nicely from her recent illness, and they have even upgraded her condition to decrepit. So that's, that's, a, that's a nice. That's nice. Well, you don't like her? You don't like Katherine Hepburn, for God's sake? 
And that's the way it is, folks. Good night. <laughs>
stated that he has no recollection of such a loan, while First Lady Hillary Clinton said, we've never even been to Arkansas. <laughs> In Cincinnati, is, is Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott an anti-Semite? Well, it is beginning to look that way. According to a report out today, on the entire Cincinnati Reds team, there is not one Jewish player. <laughs> the U.S. Tobacco Company has announced that between now and December 31, it will donate a portion of its sales, at least $1 million, to the National Volunteer Fire Council. In return, U.S. Tobacco asked that for the rest of the year, everyone pretend that cigarettes don't cause cancer. <laughs> Subway gunman Bernie Getz has apparently come up with a plan to pay off the enormous $43 million judgment against him. His plan? Mug somebody, get shot, sue them. <laughs> Last week, during his latest trial on charges of assisted suicide, Dr. Jack Kevorkian startled a Michigan courtroom when he stood up and shouted, this is a lynching. Everyone turned to look, and sure enough, he just lynched some old guy. <laughs> well, in business news, the Ford Motor Company reports a 22% drop in sales for the first quarter. Ford analysts blame the decline on a sluggish economy combined with a sudden upswing in interest rates. Also, their cars blow up. <laughs> Last night, the epic disaster film Twister opened to big box office and some controversy. The Reverend Jesse Jackson has called for a boycott of the movie, claiming that not enough black people in the film are killed by tornadoes. <laughs> in overseas news, an attempt to lift the ban on gays serving in the British Armed Forces has been defeated in Parliament. This raises a difficult legal question. How do you exactly tell if a British guy is gay? <laughs> A berry found only in the Amazon rainforest and commonly used as an aphrodisiac is the base ingredient for Josta, the new soft drink Pepsi is marketing to teenagers. According to a Pepsi spokesman, the new drink will solve a problem that has long baffled researchers. How to make teenagers more horny. <laughs> Last week, the United Artists Cinema Chain agreed to make 300 of its theaters more accessible to people with disabilities. Also, disabled patrons will no longer have to buy an extra ticket for their wheelchair. <laughs> Good. About time they overturned that barbaric practice. Okay. In his controversial new book, Bad As I Want to Be, Chicago Bulls forward Dennis Rodman says that the NBA is, quote, 50% sex. Jeez, man, I gotta stop leaving at halftime. <laughs> and in other show business news, Macaulay Culkin called police after his father, Kit Culkin, slapped him for not cleaning his room. Officers raced to the scene and immediately joined in, slapping Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Well, tomorrow is Mother's Day, and the results of the weekend update, Why My Mom is the Best, essay contests are in. First place goes to Jennifer Hunter of Morristown, New Jersey, while last place was a tie between Eric and Lyle Menendez. <laughs> I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, in an emotional press conference this week, Bob Dole announced that he was resigning from the U.S. Senate, where he had served for nearly three decades. Dole said he regretted leaving the Senate, but needed to focus all his energies on a goal many had once thought impossible, getting Bill Clinton re-elected. <laughs> Mr. 
Meanwhile, the Clinton administration has charged that the new Republican budget contains hidden tax breaks for big business and the wealthy. In response, Republican lawmakers said, Shh. <laughs> Arriving back in the U.S. after his week in London, O.J. Simpson was asked by a reporter why he hadn't spent Mother's Day with his children. A visibly annoyed Simpson replied, Idiot, I didn't spend Mother's Day with my kids because I killed their mother. <laughs> While in England, where he spoke at Oxford University, Simpson had defended actor Marlon Brando's criticism of Hollywood Jews. Later, from his island hideaway, Brando sent O.J. a telegram which read, You're not helping. <laughs> According to this week's Star Magazine, Unabomber suspect Ted Kaczynski is still a virgin at the age of 53. This uh, isn't too surprising when you consider that Kaczynski's best pickup line was, my dirty wood shack or yours? <laughs> At the White House this week, President Clinton officially came out against same-sex marriages. What's more, the president said he is not too crazy about opposite-sex marriages either. <laughs> According to published reports, MTV News anchor Tabitha Soren has been romantically linked with journalist Michael Lewis. Soren denies the reports, claiming she doesn't have time for a boyfriend because she's too busy pretending not to be stupid. <laughs> it was revealed this week that mass murderer Richard Speck, while serving a life term in prison, was videotaped with hormone-induced breasts snorting cocaine, and having sex with a man. The film was apparently made with prison video equipment and a $300,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. <laughs> Tomorrow night on 60 Minutes, Dr. Ch Jack Kevorkian will sit for his first ever in-depth interview. According to producers, Kevorkian agreed to the interview only on condition that it be conducted by veteran correspondent Andy Rooney. Wait, don't do it, Andy. It's a trap. It's a, it's a trap. In an interview in this month's Vanity Fair, actor Tom Cruise attempts to end once and for all rumors that he is gay. While performing in New York this week to a packed audience, Yoko Ono shocked the crowd by tearing up a Bible. Most shocking of all, Yoko Ono performed to a packed audience. <laughs> this week, the FDA gave final approval to a device that prevents heart attacks by blasting the heart with a powerful jolt of electricity. If the device works properly, you will not have a heart attack. If it doesn't work properly, you will have a giant heart attack. <laughs> well, more O.J. Simpson news. On Friday, the Juice officially endorsed Bill Clinton for president, adding, adding, quote, I'd like to help him any way I can. To which the president replied, well, there is one thing. And finally, tonight, we at Weekend Update salute a fellow journalist on his retirement. John Tesh is leaving his job at entertainment tonight in order to concentrate on making horrible, horrible music. <laughs> we'll miss you, John. And that's the way it is. See you next year, folks. Have a good summer. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, 
Astronaut Shannon Lucid, back on Earth after a record six months in space, was welcomed home Tuesday with a phone call from President Clinton. Said the President, quote, this is just the beginning. One day we'll be able to send an American into space indefinitely, and I hope it's a woman. In election news, the latest CNN poll shows Republican candidate Bob Dole pulling to within just 10 points of President Clinton. A spokesman for the Dole campaign said, that's impossible. <laughs> in Los Angeles this week, the defense suffered a setback in the second OJ trial when Simpson was ordered to turn over a secret videotape, which lawyers say contains proof of his guilt. What's on the tape? The first O.J. trial. <laughs> America's most eligible bachelor, John Kennedy Jr., married fiancé Carolyn Bissett last weekend. The ceremony went off without a hitch, except for one embarrassing moment when a slightly tipsy Ted Kennedy bumped into the groom, dropped his trousers, attacked the maid of honor, attacked the maid of honor's roommate, attacked the maid of honor's aunt, vomited on the photographer, and finally passed out peacefully on the wedding cake. <laughs> we had a weekend update. Wish the couple well. This week, fighting along the northern Iraqi border escalated. 20,000 Turkish troops, backed by warplanes and helicopters, launched a massive attack against a tribe of Kurdish rebels. In retaliation, the Kurds fired back with their secret weapon, the tiny clump of dirt. <laughs> In the Midwest last week, Bob Dole charged that if President Clinton is re-elected, he'll put Hillary Clinton in charge of welfare reform. Asked to, res asked to respond, President Clinton said, quote, yes, it's true. Also, Chelsea will be Secretary of State, and my brother Roger will take over as drugs are. Oh, and uh, one more thing. I'm still going to win. <laughs> Last week in Arizona, Marine Corps engineers extended a steel barrier between the United States and Mexico by two and a half miles. It's all part of a plan to make uh, illegal aliens walk an extra two and a half miles. <laughs> This week, Dr. Jack Kervorkian was granted an emergency 30-day permit to carry a handgun after telling a court that he fears, quote, right-wing nuts. But if you ask me, you know, uh, I think Kervorkian's just getting a little lazy, you know? <laughs> Civil rights legend Rosa Parks, heroine of the 1955 Alabama bus boycott, paid a visit last week to MTV's Choose or Lose bus. The visit turned ugly, however, when Ms. Parks was forced to give up her seat to Kurt Loder. <laughs> it's a sad statement, really, when you think about it. Thank you. 20th Century Fox has announced that Macaulay Culkin will not be hired to star in Home Alone 3. Studio spokesman said that it was nothing personal, but with Culkin now 16 years of age, the only way to keep him in the film would be to make the character retarded. <laughs> Speaking in Florida earlier this week, Bob Dole launched his harshest attack yet on President Clinton, accusing him of a, quote, naked failure of leadership and moral confusion in the fight against drugs. In response, President Clinton said, everything you say is true, but uh, hey, guess what? I'm still going to win. <laughs> the Federal Aviation Administration has come up with a list of 30 changes to make air travel safer. Number one on the list, no more crashes. They've decided to... <laughs> At the box office last week's number one movie, The First Wives Club, was knocked out of the top spot by a new film, The Hotter, Younger, Second Wives Club.
In business news, two of the nation's leading office supply retailers, Office Depot and Staples Office Supply, have announced a merger. Wall Street insiders are calling it the most boring merger ever. <laughs> Boxer Tommy Morrison, who is HIV positive, has announced plans to come out of retirement for one last fight. When asked about the possible health risks that his opponents face, Morrison said, they might get AIDS. <laughs> In Bridgeport, Connecticut, the Staticote Indian tribe is seeking recognition by the Bureau of Indian Affairs in order to open either a manufacturing company or a casino. Hmm, I wonder which one they'll choose. <laughs> manufacturing company or the casino. <laughs> According to the EPA, it will cost an estimated $295 million to clean up toxic waste at the former Lockheed Martin military aircraft plant in California. The cause of the toxic waste? You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> in Lexington, North Carolina, the principal of an elementary school has been harshly criticized for a controversial decision to suspend a first grader who kissed a girl in class on grounds of sexual harassment. Now, while this may sound like an overreaction, it should be noted that uh, this is the first grader. <laughs> The fake news. Our top story tonight, in less than 24 hours, the first presidential debate of the campaign will be underway. And today, both candidates were at Hartford's Bushnell Auditorium for some last-minute fine-tuning. President Clinton is still deciding which themes to emphasize in his opening remarks, while Bob Dole is deciding whether to pull the fire alarm or phone in a bomb threat. <laughs> A new CIA study may reveal that as many as 15,000 U.S. troops were exposed to Iraqi chemical weapons during the Gulf War. Although their exposure took place in March of 1991, the debilitating effects were not discovered until November of 92, when all 15,000 voted for Ross Perot. <laughs> As Baltimore and Cleveland met this week in divisional playoff action, the big story in baseball continues to be Oriole second baseman Roberto Alomar. Under a dark cloud. Yes, we, none of us like him. Under, <laughs> under a dark cloud for spitting in the face of umpire John Hirschbeck, then telling reporters the umpire's performance has been sloppy ever since the death of his son. Asked to comment, Cleveland catcher Sandy Alomar, not to be confused with Roberto Alomar, told reporters, I'm Sandy Alomar, not to be confused with Roberto Alomar. <laughs> According to newly released confidential memos, presidents of the nation's largest tobacco companies decided as early as 1964 that cigarettes should contain increasingly higher and higher levels of nicotine. Asked to comment, a spokesman for the tobacco industry said, really, that's interesting, then got plastic surgery and moved to France. <laughs> Despite pressure, jailed Whitewater Swindlers Jim and Susan McDougall are still refusing to testify about President Clinton's role in the scandal and some are charging that the president has secretly promised them a pardon in return for their silence. Well, in a candid interview this week, the president admitted that he might consider pardoning the two, but only after making, quote, every effort to have them killed in prison. <laughs> Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry is in hot water again, this time for bringing 54 government employees with him on a trip to a posh West Virginia resort. According to Barry, quote, that's how many guys it takes to keep me from smoking crack. <laughs> Thank you. 
Last week in Calcutta, India, Mother Teresa suffered a slight concussion when she slipped and bumped her head. Doctors say the 86-year-old nun is completely back to normal, except for one interesting difference. She now hates poor people. <laughs> The October issue of Penthouse, now on newsstands, contains a picture billed as, quote, the alien, the world's first authentic photograph. A survey of Penthouse readers finds that 60% think the photo's a fake, while only 40% think it's real. All 100%, however, found it, quote, surprisingly easy to masturbate to. <laughs> Well, according to a new Entertainment Weekly poll, 72% of their readers say they would not be offended if a TV show lead character were gay. Though that figure shrinks to 1% when these same readers are reminded that being gay can involve anal sex. <laughs> Walmart stores have banned singer Sheryl Crow's latest album because of a lyric in one of her songs that says, quote, Walmart sells guns to children. Oddly, the store made no objection to another lyric in the song, quote, Walmart sells crap. <laughs> After numerous requests, the National Institute of Health has finally granted funds to the University of New Mexico in order to test mice for the deadly hantavirus. Although I'm sure the government would have acted a lot sooner if instead of mice, the hantavirus was killing off rich white guys. In Connecticut this week, Glastonbury High awarded Thomas Hennessy his high school diploma at the age of 102. Way to go, Thomas. In, yeah. to In today's world, you know, without a diploma, you've got no future, really, you know? <laughs> so good for him. Finally this week, lawyers in the new O.J. Simpson trial actually found a prospective juror who claims to know nothing about O.J. Simpson, the murders, or the first trial and who told the court, quote, I don't even know when it started or ended. Unfortunately, the man had to be disqualified when it was learned that he had been a juror in the first O.J. trial. <laughs> and that's it for now. Good night, folks. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, this week, presidential candidate Bob Dole sent his top campaign aide to Dallas in an effort to convince Ross Perot to drop out of the race and endorse the Dole ticket. Emerging from the two-hour meeting with Perot, the aide announced, I'm voting for Ross Perot. <laughs> in the final days of the presidential campaign, Bob Dole has $19 million left to spend, while President Clinton has more than $32 million. Dole plans to use his $19 million for TV ads, radio spots, and mass mailings, while a confident President Clinton has allotted all of his $32 million to a crooked Arkansas land scheme. <laughs> <laughs> Though more indictments are likely in the Whitewater investigation, President Clinton is still refusing to say whether he will pardon former Whitewater associates Jim and Susan McDougall. But when asked if he would pardon First Lady Hillary Clinton, the President was crystal clear, quote, she does the crime, she does the time. <laughs> At his civil trial in Los Angeles this week, O.J. Simpson attorneys began their case with an attack on Nicole Brown Simpson's character. Outraged Brown family lawyers responded, quote, Nicole is a victim. No matter what she did, she certainly did not cut her own throat. To which Simpson's attorneys replied, on the contrary, that is precisely what we intend to prove. <laughs> A new study funded by tobacco giant Philip Morris claims that the nicotine in cigarettes may actually help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Executives at Philip Morris caution that the study is not conclusive, but just to be safe, everyone on earth should start smoking. <laughs> 
This week, TWA announced plans to reconstruct the Boeing 747 that exploded in Flight 800. Man, talk about cheap, huh? <laughs> These characters trying to save a few bucks by rebuilding a... It's ridiculous. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> At a campaign stop in Florida Thursday, a frustrated Bob Dole told a reporter, quote, something's wrong with America. I wonder sometimes what people are thinking about if people are thinking at all. At which point the reporter said, can you repeat that? I was thinking about how I'm voting for Bill Clinton. And I... <laughs> just... I missed that last part. Pop singer Madonna was outraged this week when a tabloid photographer snapped her picture while she was breastfeeding her new baby. Apparently the baby was blocking her nipple. <laughs> An independent study released this week confirms that President Clinton has appointed more minorities to high-level government posts than any other president. For purposes of the study, women were counted as minorities, and Attorney General Janet Reno was counted as a woman. <laughs> Against the Jets last week, Buffalo Bills running back Thurman Thomas broke O.J. Simpson's career rushing record. And the week before, he surpassed Simpson in career touchdowns. Next up for Thomas, an attempt to kill three people at once. <laughs> in Princess Anne, Maryland, state health officials have discovered what caused the mysterious death of 200,000 fish at a Somerset County fish farm. The culprit? You guessed it. Frank Stallone. <laughs> In Topeka, Kansas, the fire department is now using a new weapon to fight arson. A black Labrador trained to sniff out chemicals used in setting fires. Although it should be noted, if this dog is correct, the culprit in every arson fire this month is uh, some other dog's ass. <laughs> And in Madison, Wisconsin, a painting that depicts a large rat sucking at the breast of the Blessed Virgin Mary was removed from a high school art display due to complaints by local residents. The artist blamed the complaints on a lack of art education, while I blamed the complaints on the fact that it was a painting of a large rat sucking the breast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. <laughs> so, you know, we both have our, you know... All right. Finally, this week... Fire destroyed the home of Latin singing star Julio Iglesias. Music lovers everywhere had the same reaction. Yes! <laughs> yes! They burned down his house. Well, that's all the news we have now. <laughs> top story tonight. According to a new CNN poll, Republican candidate Bob Dole now trails President Clinton by 15 points. A Dole campaign spokesman says that despite these numbers, it is still possible for them to reach their ultimate goal, to lose by seven points. <laughs> While jogging on the beach in San Diego this weekend, President Clinton was berated by tourist Valerie Parker, who shouted at him, quote, you're a draft-dodging, yellow-bellied liar, and you're a disgrace to the office of the presidency, to your gender, and to this nation. And then added, I'm still going to vote for you. <laughs> During a recent interview on 2020, longtime O.J. Simpson friend Robert Kardashian said he now believes Simpson may be guilty. Though he did add that had he believed O.J. was guilty at the time, he never would have agreed to hide his bloody clothes and knife. <laughs> Well, Jocelyn Elder's new book, Jocelyn Elder's M.D., came out this week. I read it. <laughs> this week, London tabloids report that model Jerry Hall has filed for divorce from Mick Jagger, ending a 20-year relationship, although I'm sure this is a difficult time for Mick. You know, it must be kind of exciting after 20 years, now he finally gets a chance to sleep with other women. So that'll be... <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob Dole brought his struggling presidential campaign to New Jersey, vowing, in his words, to prove Yogi Berra was right when he said, it ain't over till it's over. 
reached for comment, Yogi Berra said, it's over. <laughs> Well, after a 15-year absence, the New York Yankees are back in the World Series. And some New Yorkers have come up with a novel way of snagging those hard-to-come-by tickets. Murdering guys with tickets and stealing them. <laughs> well, as I just said, the 1996 World Series will begin tomorrow. Joining us tonight on Weekend Update with his analysis of each team is a baseball legend and a dear, dear friend of mine. Please welcome Hall of Fame broadcaster Harry Carey. Hi, Harry. Hi, hey. Hi everybody. Harry Carey here. I got to tell you, folks, it's going to be one heck of a series. These are two fantastic ball clubs with outstanding pitching. You've got Andy Pettit and David Cohn for the Yankees. And, of course, the Braves have 24-game winner John Smoltz and Tommy Glavin. He's always tough, Norm. These teams are so evenly matched. Let's start with the Yankees. They play in New York City. Wow, what a town. This, this place is crazy. It, you people are nuts. I once saw an Armenian woman give birth to a baby in a subway. Beautiful, beautiful eight-pound, three-ounce boy named Tanzu. He's, he's now 11. We still keep in touch. Uh, okay, okay. Well, Harry, what can you tell us about Atlanta? The... Oh, Atlanta's a beautiful city. Many consider it the jewel of the South. You know, it's in Georgia. Yeah, that's true, Harry. But, uh, hey, let's get back to the Braves and Yankees, buddy. No, I'm... Actually, I'd like to give a quick shout-out to Gail and Ron Anderson. They run Anderson Hardware out in Waukegan, Illinois. They're actually here on vacation. They wanted me to say hi to their beautiful daughter, Colleen, who's watching the store. Hey, Colleen! Okay. <laughs> Harry, listen, buddy, let's talk about the lineups for both teams, huh? Hey, no. What about those hot dogs they serve at Yankee Stadium? Aren't they delicious? Yeah, sure, yeah. I love them so much, I once ordered 12. Twelve hot dogs? Yeah, I only ate two. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> to this day, I still laugh at the idea that I thought I could eat twelve hot dogs. <laughs> you can't do it, Norm. You can't. No, no, I, I imagine not. Well, Harry, I know you have to run, but before you leave, hey, let's get your prediction on who will win the series. Yankees and six. Wow, how about that? That's great, that's great. So that's your prediction, huh? Yankees and six? Or the Braves. You never know, dog. <laughs> that's what makes baseball such a crazy game. Okay, Harry Carey, everybody. Harry Carey. Thanks for joining thank us, Harry. You. Yeah, nice to have you with us. Good you could drop by. The New York Post reported last week that a prostitute charged with leaving her four youngest children alone in their roach-infested Brooklyn apartment had been under investigation for years as a negligent mother. What's more, apparently the woman was also a really lousy prostitute. <laughs> Last week, a buyer in Oman paid $390,000 for a camel, the highest price ever paid for a camel. Even in the Middle East, men, men, many are wondering why anyone would pay that much. Good God, that's a sexy camel. That is a... Let me take a look at his... I think it's his eyes. In Virginia... In Virginia, police are looking for a stripper who stabbed a man for telling her she was too fat to strip. Police warn that the woman is armed and extremely fat. In England, a much-publicized videotape of a naked Princess Diana having sex with her lover, Captain James Hewitt, has turned out to be a fake. But on the bright side, it's uh, still a video of two naked people having sex. <laughs> and in Brunswick, Maine, an outbreak of the deadly canine parvovirus has led to the local Humane Society killing many of its dogs. Gee, I wonder if the Humane Society would kill off victims of canine parvo if instead of dogs, 
They were rich old white guys. <laughs> and finally, Weekend Update would like to congratulate Madonna, who gave birth to a beautiful baby girl last Monday. The baby weighed in at six pounds, nine ounces, making it the fourth largest object ever to pass through Madonna's birth canal. <laughs> Congratulations, Madonna. And that is it. Good night. Good news. Take care. With no McDonald. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald. And now the fake news. Our top story tonight with growing indications that First Lady Hillary Clinton may be indicted for her role in Whitewater. President Clinton is reportedly starting to prepare for that possibility. Plans so far include renting a hall, hiring a band, and making a giant bathtub with margaritas. <laughs> this week, President Clinton made history when he nominated Madeleine Albright to be first female Secretary of State, responding to critics who say that she is not the best choice. The president insisted, quote, she looks a lot better after a couple of drinks. <laughs> Jonathan Schmitz, the Jenny Jones guest who killed his secret gay admirer because of his fear and hatred of homosexuality, has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. Well, I guess that plan backfired, huh? <laughs> well, the annual list of most dangerous holiday toys is out. Number one this year, Mattel's Eye Poker Outer. <laughs> According to researchers in Australia, koala bears have fingerprints so close to those of human beings that they could easily be, mis be mistaken by police at the scene of a crime. It should be noted, however, that the research was funded by O.J. Simpson. So. <laughs> the New York Post has reported that Michael Jackson wants his closest friend in the world, Elizabeth Taylor, to be the godmother of his child. However, those close to the pair worry that this could eventually lead to heated arguments over whether the, ch the child will be molested or eaten. <laughs> this week, Donald Trump announced that he won $20 million by betting on Evander Holyfield in his recent fight with Mike Tyson. Trump says he went public with his huge gambling win, just in case there are a few people out there who still don't hate him. <laughs> and it's been reported that Keanu Reeves is engaged to actress Amana, Amanda Decadina. Asked to comment, Keanu said, What? I thought I was gay. I <laughs> I'd always heard I was gay. I... According to a new study, the less a woman weighs when she is born, the lower her chance of getting breast cancer later in life. The study was performed by the Centers for Stuff You Can't Do Anything About. <laughs> in New York City, the city council has introduced a plan to give motorists 10 free minutes at parking meters. Cars left longer than 10 minutes will be stolen. In Amsterdam, a rubber factory has begun producing water beds for cows. Let that be a reminder to anyone who wants to legalize marijuana here in the United States. <laughs> the newest trend in funeral homes across the nation is a casket with an outside layer that allows friends and family to write messages to their departed loved ones. The most popular message so far has been, stay as sweet as you are, have a great summer. <laughs> With Norm MacDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald. And now the fake news. Our top story tonight. <laughs> so, 
Texaco Oil, reeling from the public outcry over racist remarks made by some of its top executives at a tape-recorded meeting, today announced a dramatic change in company policy. No more tape-recorded meetings. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.S. Army is dealing with a scandal of its own as dozens of female recruits have charged drill instructors with sexual harassment, intimidation, and even sexual assault. Analysts are calling it the best argument yet for gays in the military. <laughs> Attorney General Janet Reno has assembled a task force to determine whether federal campaign finance laws were violated by Democrats, Republicans, or both. Another task force will attempt to determine whether Attorney General Reno is a man, a woman, or both. <laughs> This week, in a secret ceremony in Australia, Michael Jackson was married for the second time. Asked what makes his new bride special, the King of Pop said, quote, She has taught me about the power of imagination, like imagining that a grown woman is a ten-year-old boy. <laughs> you know he's a homosexual pedophile, right? You understand? <laughs> And yes, it is true, Michael Jackson is going to be a father. Already he has hired an entire staff of nannies, nurses, and extra bodyguards, which hopefully will protect the child from Michael Jackson. <laughs> this weekend, veteran news anchorman David Brinkley apologized to Bill Clinton for an election night commentary in which he called the president, quote, boring and uncreative. Admitted Brinkley, there was certainly nothing uncreative about the way you moved Vince Foster's body. <laughs> President's a murderer. You didn't know that? <laughs> Nikki Barkutis, a young woman whose wealthy family owns a chain of profitable restaurants in New York, has won $23 million in the New York lotto. This raises an interesting question. Nikki Barkutis, will you marry me? <laughs> O.J. Simpson was in a different courtroom this week, attempting to regain custody of his two children. In order to prove to the court how much he loves his kids, O.J. pointed out, quote, Hey, they're still alive, aren't they? <laughs> Demi Moore is wrapped filming on G.I. Jane in which she plays a Navy, Navy SEAL combat officer. Moore says that in contrast to other Hollywood portrayals of women in the military, her character will have giant breasts. <laughs> Wildlife officials in Maryland say that increased hunting will be necessary to control the state's black bear population. Gee, I wonder if hunting would be the answer if Instead of overpopulation of black bears, there were an overpopulation of rich, old, white men. Yeah. Yeah. Then I wonder. The New York City Transit Authority plans to put up signs in subway stations asking city residents to be more polite when getting on and off the subway. Most New Yorkers say the idea sounds great and that the new signs will make excellent urinals. <laughs> Doctors have discovered that deer hunters are at an unusually high risk for stress-related heart attacks. Also at high risk for stress-related heart attacks, deer. In Washington, D.C., reporter Alan Etter was doing a story on violence at a local high school when he was attacked and severely beaten by a gang of students. The assailants say they have nothing against the reporter. They just love irony. <laughs> 80-year-old Frank Sinatra, recovering from a bout of pneumonia, was apparently well enough last Saturday to bet daughter Tina Sinatra that Mike Tyson would defeat Evander Holyfield. Well, Tina made him pay the $10, although later he had his people rough her up and take back the money. <laughs>
Well, just when you thought things couldn't get worse for Bob Dole. Or so. <laughs> I just, I just uh, yeah, I know, Howard. You've had your fun now, Norm. You're out of work. Well, I, I thought I'd just do a joke about you. I had a little Yeah, what you've been doing, those, I've been missing a lot of them, but uh, your fun's over, the election's over. Unless there's a recount, you're out of work. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's it. Maybe we can go have a beer or something. How'd that be? You are with me. All yeah. right. Bob Dole, everybody. Good night, folks. <laughs> with Norm MacDonald. What a crowd. Oh, my Lord. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald. Now the fake news. Our top story tonight. Yesterday, in a dramatic finish to his White House bid, Bob Dole began a 96-hour, 15-state, non-stop campaign tour that will take him right through to Election Day. Political experts are calling the grueling marathon a, quote, last-ditch effort, while medical experts are calling it, quote, a suicide attempt. <laughs> At a rally in California this week, Dole urged voters to ignore polls which have him trailing President Clinton by double digits. In addition, Dole asked them to ignore newspaper headlines next Wednesday that say, Dole loses in landslide. <laughs> Meanwhile, a new development in the case of John Wan, the mysterious Indonesian accused of illegally raising millions for the Democratic Party. Earlier this week, Secret Service logs showed that Mr. Wong had visited the Clinton White House more than 60 times. But on Friday, administration spokesman revealed that there are actually two John Wongs. Furthermore, they stressed that the John Wong who visited the White House is a different man. He isn't the fundraiser. He's the guy who killed Vince Foster. <laughs> well, the New York Yankees are the 1996 World Series. And this week, three million Yankees fans gathered on the streets of New York to honor their heroes. While the fans were of different ages, races, and religions, they shared one thing in common. They were all standing in urine. <laughs> the giant ticker tape parade for the Yankees left nearly four tons of confetti on Manhattan streets and sidewalks. But New York officials do have a plan for dealing with the confetti, leaving it there to soak up all that urine. <laughs> At an emotional press conference this week, a now exonerated Richard Jewell spoke about his ordeal as the chief suspect in the Olympic Park bombing. Quote, I couldn't think straight, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, he said. Then later he admitted, all right, I could eat. I, uh... <laughs> I couldn't sleep, though. I had trouble. In business news, a British company has announced its intention to purchase telecommunications giant MCI. This, after MCI called the British company's owner at home 5,000 times. <laughs> Ballots will be mailed out next week in the election for president of the Teamsters Union, with incumbent Ron Carey squaring off against Jimmy Hoffa Jr. Hoffa is eager to follow in his father's footsteps, Except for that last footstep where he disappeared forever. That's the footstep he wants to avoid, just that last one. Otherwise, he enjoys the hunger. Now that John F. Kennedy Jr. is a married man, who is the world's most eligible bachelor? Well, when reporters asked JFK Jr. himself who he thinks is the world's most eligible bachelor, he said, actually, it's still me. <laughs> A French government survey finds that Disneyland Paris is the most popular tourist attraction in the country. And the most popular ride? Women who don't shave their armpits of the Caribbean. <laughs> there's, two ways, there's two ways to pronounce that, and I got neither. <laughs> At the Simpsons civil trial this week, O.J. and Fred Goldman got into an explosive shouting match. Mr. Goldman bellowed at O.J., don't give me that damn look, while O.J. shouted back, 
I wasn't even looking at you. You're just mad because I killed your son. <laughs> In the December issue of Playboy, 60 Minutes reporter Mike Wallace reveals that he has not only smoked marijuana, but that it made him sexually aroused. According to Wallace, he made these comments in an effort to frighten young people off sex and drugs forever. <laughs> in an interview this week, Bob Dole said he is strong enough to handle the pain of losing the presidential election. Although he did admit that the shock of winning would give him a giant heart attack. <laughs> In Detroit, under a new prison rehabilitation program called Fresh Start, employers will get a tax break if they hire an ex-convict. Employers who hire more than one ex-convict will get robbed and killed. <laughs> in economic news, unemployment figures rose slightly for the month of October with declines in the Dow Jones and NASDAQ. The reason for the sudden downturn? You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> Finally, psychiatrist Kurt Freund, one of the world's leading experts on the study of deviant sexual arousal, passed away last week at the age of 82. Dr. Freund's last words were, quote, whatever happens to me, can someone please make sure that the headline of my obituary does not contain the phrase, deviant sexual arousal? <laughs> Would that be too much to ask from you, you dirty bastards? Could you just... Okay. And that's it. Hey, vote for Bob Dole. Thanks, folks. Good night. And now the fake news, our top story tonight. This week in Los Angeles civil court, an FBI expert testified that shoe prints left by the killer, exactly matched shoes belonging to O.J. Simpson. In response, O.J. stood up and exclaimed, Wait a minute. Wait a doggone minute. I just figured it out. The real killer is me. <laughs> Speaking in Australia this week about the problems of being America's first lady, Hillary Clinton joked, quote, Perhaps I'll walk around with a bag over my head when I come out into public and have no opinions and never express them publicly or privately. To which the president replied, Yes, yes, oh God, yes! <laughs> Last week at a dramatic press conference about the crash of TWA Flight 800, ABC News correspondent Pierre Salinger displayed a document which he believes is proof that the jet was shot down by a U.S. Navy missile. Later, he proudly showed reporters his solid gold Rolex that he bought on the street for just $15. <laughs> That's one ugly bastard, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> on Tuesday, the Space Shuttle Columbia began a 16-day mission with a crew that includes astronaut Story Musgrove, at 61, the oldest person ever in space. NASA Command Center spotted the shuttle circling the Earth at 15 miles an hour with the left blinker on. <laughs> John Hinckley is reportedly confused and upset that prison officials won't give him weekend furloughs. In an angry letter this week, Hinckley wrote, quote, Give me one good reason why, and don't tell me it's because of that one time I shot the president. <laughs> Due to his recent heart bypass surgery, Russian President Boris Yeltsin is now restricted to one glass of wine a day. It should be noted, however, in Russia, this is a wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> like a joke from the old Dean Martin show. Well, it's finally official. In a race marred by charges of voter fraud, California Congressman Bob Dornan has lost his seat to Democratic challenger Loretta Sanchez by just 665 votes. Ms. Sanchez credits her victory to hard work, determination, and the fact that she voted 665 times. <laughs>
Baywatch star Pamela Anderson filed for divorce this week from Tommy Lee, telling friends that even though they had sex almost constantly, it was not enough to keep Tommy Lee from sleeping with other women. You can read all about Tommy Lee's exploits in my new book, Tommy Lee, the greatest man who ever lived. <laughs> After Space Jam's smash opening last weekend, Michael Jordan's promoters have good reason to turn him into a movie star. Apparently, there is still some money in the world that he hasn't got yet. <laughs> Actress Sherry Stringfield announced this week that she is leaving the hit series ER. Several actors have already expressed great interest in the part, including Shelley Long and David Caruso. <laughs> In order to cut down on in-flight fatalities, American Airlines has decided to upgrade the medical kits on all its planes. Each kit will now contain common life-saving drugs, a heart defibrillator, and a spare plane. <laughs> Last weekend, in a dramatic rescue off the coast of Long Island, fishermen pulled a 300-pound man from frigid waters. They were alerted by his desperate cries of, Help! Help! I'm starving! I'm starving! <laughs> Big fat guy. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly's list of the 101 most powerful people in show business is out. At number one, Fox CEO Robert Murdoch. And at number two, you guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> a Connecticut hotel where Bill Clinton spent the night has donated to a charity auction a bagel the president ordered from room service but never ate. Though potential bidders should be advised, while the president never actually ate the ba bagel, he did have, quote, relations with it. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Ah. <laughs> well, yesterday, November 22nd, America's observed a milestone. The 75th birthday of Rodney Dangerfield. Now, you just turned 75, you just turned 75, and tell me now, has your attitude toward girls changed? Uh, no, when you turn 75, your attitude towards girls does not change. It's when you turn gay, then your attitude oh. towards girls. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you know, even though I'm getting older, with girls I can hold my own, you know. Is that right? Which is usually what they tell me to do. <laughs> and the idea you get older is not to be lonely. Loneliness is the worst thing in the world. You know, I'm a lonely guy, always been lonely, very lonely. Give you an idea how lonely I am. The other day in traffic, a guy gave me the finger, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> but I'm not as lonely as I used to be. <laughs> now, I got married three years ago, and I'm not lonely too much now anymore. And I got a good woman, I tell you. I got a woman who loves me for my money and my fame and not for what I am. <laughs> Now, when I tell you, before I got married for years, I was just playing the field. Or to be more accurate, I was playing with myself in the field. <laughs> well, you're 75 now, Rodney. This should be a happy time in your life. I mean, this now you're into the golden years. The golden years, golden years. That means you go to the bathroom five times a night. That's the golden years. <laughs> when your toes outnumber your teeth, that's the golden years. <laughs> And when a daily double is prune juice and enema, that's the golden <laughs> year. When you get old, you get arthritis, too. Arthritis, that's a beauty. You get stiff in every place except the place you need it. <laughs> you know when you're really old? Well, when your family talks about you in front of you. <laughs> Ever see those families? The guy's sitting right there. What do you want to do with Pop? <laughs> Pop can't stay here. And Pop just sits there dribbling. Uh, uh, 
Harry, put Pop in the garage. We got company coming. Okay, that's when you're old. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Rodney, I, I understand you got a new movie coming out. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know about that yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a new movie coming out. It opens in January. It's called Meet Wally Sparks, and it's funny. In fact, it's freaking funny. Freaking funny. Freaking funny. That's, that's the I cleaned that one up nice, too, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, okay, baby. All right. And I got a good deal with this movie, too. My lawyer, Nikki Pumpanese, took care of it for me. <laughs> Nikki's a great lawyer. Had a rape charge reduced to tailgating. <laughs> Well, Norm, I really have to run along. I have so many important things to do. I got nothing to do. I think I'll go backstage and hang out with the debris. Maybe I'll stand outside the ladies' room for a while. Hey, honey, you know me? <laughs> but before I go, I want to leave you with one last thought. One last thought. Every man has his tale of woe. Unfortunately in life, there's more woe than tale. Oh, All right. Rodney James, My pleasure to see you, baby. Weekend update with Norm McDonald. Thank you, folks. I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight comes from the O.J. Simpson civil trial, where this week it was revealed that in his first interview with police, Simpson had refused to take a lie detector test. His reason? It detects lies. <laughs> Meanwhile, Simpson defense attorney Robert Baker argued that a dark spot in a crime scene photo was a, quote, mystery shoe print, suggesting that there were actually two killers. O.J. hopes this will support his theory that he did not act alone. <laughs> President Bill Clinton and Russian President Boris Yeltsin have made tentative plans to meet early next year. According to the White House, the pair will use the meeting to resume their ongoing debate. Drinking versus pot smoking. <laughs> the FDA has approved a drug used for anti-depression to help people quit smoking cigarettes. Although it should be noted, the drug is crack. So... <laughs> a top aviation watchdog group warned this week that the nation's airlines are vulnerable to terrorist attack. The biggest problem, apparently, watchdog groups pointing out to terrorists that airlines are vulnerable to attack. That's the... That's all right. Over the next two months, the murder... Uh, I'm sorry, after the... Uh, over the next... Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. Over the next two months, the number of Border Patrol agents in Tucson, Arizona will double to 49. Meanwhile, the number of illegal aliens sneaking into the country will hold steady at 100 million billion. <laughs> so, did I screw something else up or something? Famed anthropologist Mary Leakey died this Monday at the age of 83. Leakey was buried near her home where she will rest in peace until some nosy anthropologist digs her up in a couple of... <laughs> That's a nice obituary for the lady. This week, renowned heart surgeon Michael DeBakey attacked the hypocrisy of Hollywood stars who oppose the use of animals in medical research and yet wear ribbons supporting the war on deadly diseases like AIDS. In response, animal activist Ricky Lake said, quote, but the red ribbon diverts attention from my gigantic ass. I... <laughs> if it wasn't for the red ribbon, people would, would notice my gigantic ass more. They... <laughs> By wearing the red ribbon, less people... <laughs> well, a big seller this holiday season is Michael Bolton's Christmas album, This Is The Time. Happy birthday, Jesus. Hope you like crap. <laughs> this week, security guard Richard Jewell, who had sued NBC over comments by Tom Brokaw suggesting that he was the Olympic Park bomber, 
settled out of court with the network for an undisclosed sum. Meanwhile, the FBI has a new 800 number for tips on the case, and curiously, the first call was from Mr. Jewell, who suggested that they check out Tom Brokaw. <laughs> this week, the chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra, turned 81 years old, and he was honored by having the Empire State Building lit in blue. Also in Mr. Sinatra's honor, the Empire State Building had the Twin Towers rough up the Chrysler Building. <laughs> Grocery and department stores across America have added reserved parking spaces for expectant mothers. Especially excited about this innovation are handicapped drivers who will finally get to park in someone else's space. <laughs> in a recent interview, actress Goldie Hawn says that she does not mind if the man she's married to cheats on her, explaining, quote, sexual experimentation is a basic need of all men. You can read more about Goldie Hawn's personal philosophy in my new book, Goldie Hawn, The Greatest Woman Who Ever Lived. <laughs> and finally, the number one selling doll this Christmas is Tickle Me Elmo. And the least popular selling doll? You guessed it, Tickle Me Frank Stallone. Jesus. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks. Ah, thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news, our top story tonight. This Monday, the Supreme Court will begin hearing arguments over whether Paula Jones' ha sexual harassment suit against President Clinton may proceed. Jones, who claims that while governor of Arkansas, Clinton exposed himself to her in a hotel room, says that she can accurately and precisely describe the president's genitalia. But White House spokesman scoffed, quote, any woman who's worked in the state of Arkansas for the last 20 years could do that. <laughs> this week at the O.J. Simpson civil trial, the focus shifted from the defendant to the alleged character flaws of Nicole Brown Simpson. Attorney for O.J. hammered away at her lifestyle, citing sexual promiscuity, drug use, and the fact that she married a double murderer. <laughs> Eight letter bombs sent into the United States last week appear to have been mailed from the Middle East. FBI expert says that it is too early to jump to conclusions, but then added, it's Richard Jewell. <laughs> Russian President Boris Yeltsin was hospitalized for pneumonia this week, triggering new worries about his health. Yeltsin himself remains unconcerned, however, because he is completely hammered. <laughs> <laughs> As of next week, Value Jet Airlines says it will discontinue service to Mobile, Alabama. According to airline executives, this cost-cutting measure is expected to save the company over $200. <laughs> Despite recent criticism, the School Board of Oakland, California has voted to proceed with its controversial Ebonics programs for city schools. In fact, school board officials today announced the winner of the first citywide Ebonics spelling bee, fourth grader Soon Duk Kim. <laughs> Congratulations to Soon Duk Kim. Good job. Dallas Cowboys stars Michael Irvin and Eric Williams were cleared of sexual assault charges yesterday when their accuser admitted that she made up her story. According to the woman, she concocted the hoax under duress after being kidnapped and held at gunpoint by Green Bay Packers Andre Risen and Reggie White. <laughs> Dallas police promise a thorough investigation. The artist formerly known as Prince says he now wants to be known as simply the artist. Meanwhile, I will continue to refer to him as simply the fruit. <laughs> In other music news, several major acts are on tour this month, including the Counting Crows, Metallica, and the fruit. 
The FBI, still pursuing its investigation of the Olympic Park bombing, has decided to launch an internet web page. Net users can log on to view crime scene photos, leave tips, and try to guess Richard Jewell's weight. <laughs> In Norwich, Connecticut, a local museum has made a long overdue effort at racial reconciliation by returning 21 ancient tribal artifacts to the Mohegan Indians. But as for everything else in the country, we'll be keeping that. <laughs> it's good news, really. <laughs> we don't have to give any of it back. And in medical news, a new test can now detect prostate trouble months earlier than any previous test. The only downside, it involves shoving some huge device up your ass. <laughs> so. it's, it's not all gravy, you know? The most famous vineyard in France, Chateau Mouton Rothschild, has been getting complaints about a new wine label which features a sketch of a naked woman. It should be noted, however, that the sketch is of Sally Jesse Raphael. So. <laughs> you know, I see, nobody wants to see that. Finally, finally, after 40 years in California, the Los Angeles Dodgers are for sale and many New York fans are calling for the team to return to Brooklyn. It's all part of a plan to mess with Bob Dole's mind. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, late yesterday, the House subcommittee investigating Newt Gingrich finally issued its long-awaited report, recommending that the speaker be given a reprimand and a $300,000 fine for minor ethical violations. Gingrich has promised to come up with the money promptly, although he admits it is going to involve giant ethical violations. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, with President Clinton's second inaugural approaching, attention has turned to what the women will be wearing at the festivities, According to the White House, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton will wear a gown by Oscar de la Renta. Tipper Gore will appear in a Jennifer George ensemble. And Attorney General Janet Reno will be outfitted by Rochester Big and Tall. <laughs> <laughs> this week, in arguments before the Supreme Court, lawyers for President Clinton asked that the sexual harassment suit brought by Paula Jones be delayed until he leaves office. According to Clinton's attorney, quote, if the president were hauled into court every time some nut accused him of sexual harassment, he'd have no time to scare up tail. <laughs> he likes scaring up the tail. Okay. In dramatic testimony this week at a civil trial, O.J. Simpson said he didn't commit suicide only because, quote, my mother told me you don't go to heaven if you kill yourself. Oddly, his mother did say, quote, it's okay to kill other people. It's... <laughs> In Atlanta this week, two separate bomb blasts rocked a building which houses an abortion clinic, asked if there were any suspects. FBI spokesman said, quote, we don't want to rush to judgment like we did in the Olympic Park bombing case, but then added, it's Richard Jewell. <laughs> Basketball superstar Michael Jordan has scored a slam dunk with his new men's fragrance, selling one and a half million bottles of Michael Jordan cologne in the first two months. No, the scent does not smell like Michael Jordan after a game. It smells like Patrick Ewing. So it's... <laughs> it smells good. This week, the Reverend Jesse Jackson called for an end to his boycott of automaker Mitsubishi citing improvements in job opportunities for minorities, and also the fact that he couldn't find a word that rhymes with Mitsubishi. <laughs> in New York, state-of-the-art self-cleaning public toilets may soon appear on city streets. In a survey, New Yorkers expressed their enthusiasm for the outdoor toilets, noting that they are very easy to urinate on. Beginning in March, DC Comics will change Superman's traditional red and blue costume to a new form-fitting bodysuit. The problem with the old costume? Not gay enough.
the hell's going on in the country? That's not Superman. All right. Last week in Canastota, New York, fight promoter Don King was elected to the International Boxing Hall of Fame. King graciously thanked the Hall of Fame for the honor, then took all its money and left it bankrupt. <laughs> in Springfield, Missouri, the local cable company mistakenly aired five minutes of explicit sex scenes from the Playboy channel on the Cartoon Network <laughs> during an episode of The Flintstones. Experts say that children who saw the broadcast called it the greatest Flintstones episode ever. <laughs> In literary news, the ever-reclusive J.D. Salinger will publish his first book in 34 years. Asked what inspired him to finally write again, Salinger said, Get the hell off my lawn! <laughs> <laughs> Following the passage of a new city ordinance, strippers are now forbidden to give lap dances in the city of Houston, Texas. Or as I refer to it, Nazi Germany. <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> Completely ridiculous. <laughs> Finally, according to the U.S. News and World Report, 1997 Career Guide, the best job in the United States for the second year in a row is Interactive Business System Analyst. However, last year's worst job, Assistant Crack Whore, <laughs> has been replaced by a new worst job, crack whore trainee. That's the... <laughs> and that's the way it is. Good night, folks. In a unanimous verdict this week, a Santa Monica jury found O.J. Simpson liable for the wrongful deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, awarding the plaintiff's damages of eight and a half million dollars. Reacting to the verdict, Simpson insisted that he has nowhere near that amount of money and that his only remaining asset is 30 pairs of Brunei Mali shoes. <laughs> As the jury's decision was announced, Nicole Brown's sister, Denise Brown, told reporters, quote, I feel ecstatic, while Johnny Cochran said, quote, I accept the verdict and now we must move on. Meanwhile, Cato Quolin, Cato Kalin, I'm sorry, Cato Kalin said, quote, Please, God, don't let it be over. <laughs> the announcement of the verdict came toward the end of President Clinton's annual State of the Union address, and to many observers, completely overshadowed the event. Even the president was distracted during his speech, waiting to hear exactly how much it costs to kill your wife. <laughs> In other news, authorities in Pontiac, Michigan, are trying to determine if Dr. Jack Kevorkian was involved in the death of a woman whose body was found in the back of his suicide van. You know, I'm no expert in police work, but, uh, yes! <laughs> Meanwhile, 5,000 disabled Americans were in Washington last week to protest doctor-assisted suicide. On a sad note, the demonstration turned ugly when all 5,000 disabled people fought over two handicapped parking spaces. <laughs> I told you, sad, it was sad. Disgraced former presidential advisor Dick Morris revealed this week that President Clinton phoned him two days after the election. Pressed as to what the two men talked about during their three-hour conversation, Morris said, horse. <laughs> Skater Tanya Harding, banned from competing for the United States because of her part in the Nancy Kerrigan attack, received a setback this week when her request to skate for Norway was also rejected. However, Harding remains optimistic that she'll get the okay to compete for the Republic of White Trashistan. <laughs> And in business news, American Express has announced plans to lay off 3,000 workers. According to the company, employees will be notified of the layoffs with pink slips reading simply, Don't leave home. 
This week, the California Department of Corrections confirmed that Lyle Menendez and model Anna Erickson were married in prison. Following the ceremony, Menendez spent a romantic wedding night being raped by two white guys and a big black guy. <laughs> TriStar's Picture is planning a film about the 70s disco act, The Village People. While the movie will be coming out next summer, it plans to wait until Thanksgiving to come out to its parents. <laughs> Actor Bruce Willis is filming his next movie, The Broadway Brawler, in Wilmington, Delaware. Meanwhile, his wife, Demi Moore, is taking a break from movie work, saying she wants to spend more time with her huge breasts. <laughs> Well, how's this for a coincidence? Last week in New York, three sisters each had a baby on the same day at the same hospital. Though it should be noted, the three women were in different hospitals, they're not sisters, and they didn't have babies. Also, it was uh, two guys. <laughs> Still kind of a coincidence, yeah? When you think about it? According to a new ordinance in Kansas City, Missouri, anyone convicted of indecent exposure, prostitution, or soliciting prostitution will have his name posted on a local cable channel. If I can be permitted a personal comment, while the plan's goal of publicly shaming sex offenders is well-intentioned, it's, it's important to remember in this democracy of ours that Norm MacDonald is a very common name. <laughs> And finally, sources report that Michael Jackson's baby is due February 27th, and it's going to be named Michael Jackson Jr. Michael plans to be with the mother during the delivery. In his words, to make up for not being there for the contra... <laughs> sources report that Michael Jackson's baby is due February 27th. It's conception. The last word was conception, so... McDonald. Hi, I'm Norm McDonald, and this is the fake news. Our top story tonight, this week at the civil trial of O.J. Simpson, the jury, which had earlier found him liable in the deaths of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson, this week tacked on an additional $25 million in punitive damages. On hearing the news, Simpson declared, quote, this is far from over. Asked to clarify that statement, O.J. said, quote, I'm going to kill more people. What do you think I meant? <laughs> just after hours, just hours after, works both ways. Just hours after, President Clinton again pledged to clean up the Democratic Party's fundraising operation. The White House announced he will attend a million dollar fundraiser next week. However, spokesman Mike McCurry stressed that at this event, quote, donations from Indonesia or other foreign countries will not be accepted unless they are left in a brown paper bag under the sink in the men's room." <laughs> Unquote. More bad news for the president. This week, convicted Whitewater swindler James McDougal claimed that his ex-wife, Susan McDougal, had an affair with Clinton while he was governor of Arkansas. The president denied the charges, adding, quote, if you really knew me, you'd know that I was always faithful to Jennifer Flowers. <laughs> In an angry speech last week, Cuban leader Fidel Castro called on the United States to give back the land he claims was stolen from Mexico, an area that includes California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. U.S. officials immediately denounced the idea, insisting that it would only lead to Mexicans sneaking into Nevada. <laughs> At a veterans hospital in the Bronx yesterday, four Playboy Playmates were on hand to wish the residents a happy Valentine's Day. One veteran who was there called it an afternoon of, quote, hellish, agonizing sexual frustration. <laughs> on Wednesday, Michael Jackson and wife Debbie Rowe became the proud parents of a seven pound, 10 ounce baby boy. 
asked about the baby's appearance, a family spokesman said he's got Debbie's eyes, Latoya's mouth, and one of Michael's noses. <laughs> And according to his dad, the three-day-old boy is a regular chip off the old block. In fact, he's already molested a one-day-old boy. <laughs> Here's an interesting sidebar to the story. During the delivery, the doctor allowed Jackson himself to cut the umbilical cord. Michael then took the cord home so that the elephant man's remains would have a new play frame. <laughs> the Irish rock band U2 kicked off their new tour in New York City yesterday, making a surprise appearance at a downtown Kmart. Fellow Irish performer Sinead O'Connor was also on hand, but she, uh, she works there. So. <laughs> Well, it's Oscar time once again, and Breaking the Waves star Emily Watson was nominated for Best Actress. Asked to comment, Watson said, Who the hell am I? I've never heard of myself. <laughs> Senator Strom Thurmond, at 94, the oldest person ever to serve in Congress, has been hospitalized this week with a bout of the flu. Doctors who examined the senator thoroughly got kind of nauseous. <laughs> Prince, the black Labrador from New Hampshire, sentenced to death for killing a rooster, won a reprieve this week, but although Prince is now officially off the hook with local authorities, he still must face the family of the rooster in the civil trial. So. <laughs> Maybe giving up a few milk bones or whatever. <laughs> Stephen J. Hawking, the renowned astrophysicist, regarded as Albert Einstein's intellectual successor, conceded defeat this week in a wager he made six years ago with two professors at the California Institute of Technology. Hawking incorrectly bet against the existence of naked singularities, the mathematical point in a black hole where space and time are infinitely distorted where matter is infinitely dense, and where the rules of relativistic physics break down. With all due respect to Mr. Hawking, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> I would have taken that bet, made a quick $20. In northern Florida, refuse from a paper mill has caused female fish to develop male sex organs. And in her related story, Attorney General Janet Reno. <laughs> Connecticut legislatures are about to pass a law that would make it illegal to prohibit breastfeeding in public. Then, hopefully, these legislatures will also change the fascist law that the person being breastfed in public has to be a baby. <laughs> well, here's a sign of the times. This summer, for the first time ever, you'll need a reservation to get into Yosemite National Park. Officials say those hit hardest by the new regulations will be the squirrels. <laughs> Gary Larson's writing for the show now. <laughs> and finally, first place in Weekend Update's most romantic Valentine contest goes to David Delaferra of Kearney, New Jersey. Yesterday, Mr. Delaferra, who works as a fireman here in the city, climbed the ladder of a fire truck up to the third floor office window of his girlfriend, Alexandra. There, with a dozen roses and a wedding ring, he proposed to her in front of all her co-workers. Congratulations, David. And coming in last place for the third year in a row, O.J. Simpson. <laughs> and that's the way it is. Good night, folks. Enjoy your time. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. 
Our top story tonight in a startling reversal. Kenneth Starr announced yesterday that he would not resign as Whitewater Special Prosecutor and that now he intends to stay on until the investigation is completed. This new development apparently did not trouble a confident President Clinton who still plans to resume making conjugal visits to Susan McDougall. This week in Moscow, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright and Russian President Boris Yeltsin sat down to discuss the delicate issue of NATO expansion. On emerging from what was described as a tense meeting, Ms. Albright said, quote, For this I traveled 5,000 miles to meet with some drunken Meshuggah. On my worst enemy, I wouldn't wish this. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Indogate scandal continues to widen. Internal Democratic National Committee records now show that fundraiser John Wong was responsible for bringing two Chinese businessmen to the White House for a $180,000 coffee with the president. That works out to $90,000 a for a cup of coffee. Although, in the president's defense, the coffee was Starbucks. So. <laughs> Starbucks is a little pricey. Also this week in Washington, several prominent Democrats joined Republicans in pleading with Attorney General Janet Reno to investigate fundraising abuses and also to shave. <laughs> At a book signing in New York this week, Fred Goldman once again offered to forget the millions owed to him by O.J. Simpson if he would simply admit to the Brentwood murders. A visibly annoyed O.J. responded, why in the world would I do that when I have no intention of paying you anyway? <laughs> After American Airlines decided this week to cut fares by 50%, the four other major airlines said they would match the bargain ticket prices. Also fighting to stay competitive, discount carrier ValueJet announced that it will now accept stolen credit cards and bad checks. <laughs> Michael Jackson has reportedly stepped right into his new role as a dad, spending many hours a day with his newborn son, doing the changing, the burping, even the breastfeeding. So, it's nice when a, when a fella does that. In Wisconsin, students at Menominee High School are desperately fighting efforts by the politically correct to change their team nickname, The Indians. Already, opponents of the name have rejected the students' first compromise, the Drunken Indians. <laughs> they feel that's almost worse in a way, you know? <laughs> Bessie the Cow, the most famous bovine citizen of San Antonio, Texas, is now listed in Ripley's Believe It or Not after giving birth to her 10th set of calf twins. Bessie also made Ripley's under the category Least original name for a cow. <laughs> and finally, in medical news, there are reports that suicide doctor Jack Kravorkian is considering retirement. As Kravorkian put it, I always said I'd quit the day it stopped being fun. <laughs> I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news, our top story tonight. Yesterday, President Clinton underwent a two-hour operation to repair damage to his knee. Suffered in a fall while visiting in Florida at the home of professional golfer Greg Norman. Many were surprised to hear that the two were on friendly terms, since Greg Norman had once threatened that if he ever caught Clinton with his wife again, he'd smash his kneecap with a five iron. <laughs> the president spent last night at Bethesda Naval Hospital in a private room, which he shared with Three Chinese businessmen who came up with the required $200,000. More bad news for OJ. This week, HarperCollins reached an agreement with the Brown family to publish his late wife's diary. Especially troublesome to Simpson is this final entry. Dear diary, I have to run now because OJ is here to murder me. And also the guy who returned my glasses. I think he might murder him, too. 
In North Carolina, a legislative panel has agreed on a bill which guarantees a murder victim's family two front row seats to watch the execution. The ruling has angered both North Carolina's death penalty opponents and death penalty season ticket holders. <laughs> And in Fairbanks, Alaska, a new high-tech emergency phone system will give operators the name and address of anyone who calls 911. Note to self, uh, don't make any more prank 911 calls in Fairbanks, Alaska. <laughs> I know I have a pocket here somewhere. <laughs> President Clinton this week declined an offer by Republicans to form a bipartisan commission to scale back annual increases in Social Security. Asked why he rejected the proposals, the president said, quote, personally, I like the idea of a bipartisan commission. However, the two Chinese guys who gave me a million dollars, they didn't go for it. <laughs> they just didn't like the idea. And in financial news, H.J. Hines has announced plans to lay off 3,000 workers. According to company spokesman, employees who refuse to budge will be turned over and shaken vigorously until they slide out. <laughs> Much like ketchup. <laughs> in Portland, Oregon, eight anthropologists are in court arguing the constitutional right to study a 9,300-year-old Native American skeleton, which a local tribe wants to rebury. Though the case has merit, authorities are suspicious that one of the people involved in the suit is not really an anthropologist. It's, <laughs> it's this guy over here. In New York, police have arrested a local Queens man whom they are calling the Serial Fondler. Apparently, the man suffers from an intense desire to run up behind women and squeeze their buttocks. Psychologists call this impulse, quote, normal. <laughs> This week, the White House asked Congress to authorize $175 billion in funds for highway construction, mass transit, and other transportation projects. The president's plan has significant support in Congress, but many Washington insiders are wondering how exactly this benefits China. <laughs> In New Mexico this week, lawmakers passed a measure to abolish the state's 15-year statute of limitations on first-degree murder. <laughs> Note to self, cancel plans to return to New Mexico. <laughs> Asked recently what will set his new Batman film apart from its predecessors, Batman and Robin director Joel Schumacher said, quote, in this one, all the costumes will have nipples. <laughs> Note to self, do not watch the next Batman and Robin. In Duluth, Minnesota, authorities suspect arson was to blame for a fire that destroyed a mobile home and killed 73 cats. The chief suspect so far, this dog. <laughs> Dogs don't care for cats much, you know. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I know. Oh, you want me to say that? You, you'd like me to say that? Thank you, ladies and parents. Keep your kids out of show business. <laughs> I said it. Weekend Update's 1997 survey of the most dangerous jobs in America is out today. The biggest change, last year's number one, West Coast rap star. You know, it'd probably be better if I was over on this camera. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, well, now that I'm over on this camera, it'd probably be better if you put the cards over here. <laughs> Last year's number one. Let's. Why don't we start at the start of the joke now? Okay, that's all right. I'll just make it up. The 1997 most dangerous jobs in America is out, and this year a little bit of a change. Last year's number one, West Coast rap star. <laughs> has been knocked out of the top spot by the new most dangerous job in America, East Coast Rap Star. <laughs> Imagine if it had all gone well. <laughs> and finally, next week, people everywhere will celebrate St. Patrick's Day, or as alcoholics refer to it, Monday. That's it, folks. Good night. Our top story tonight, late this week, President Clinton and Russian President Boris Yeltsin met in Helsinki to discuss the sensitive topic of NATO expansion. For his part, Yeltsin stood firm, saying he must do what is right for Russia, while Clinton also stood firm, saying he must do what is right for China. <laughs> <laughs> On Thursday, in a stunning admission, the Liggett Group, makers of Chesterfield, Lark, and L&M cigarettes, acknowledged publicly that their cigarettes are addictive and do cause cancer. Hours later, the four other major tobacco makers, Reynolds, Philip Morris, Laura Lard, and Brown and Williamson, issued a joint statement saying, quote, Today's announcement comes as no surprise. Everyone knows Liggett cigarettes has caused cancer. <laughs> Also this week, a California newspaper revealed that O.J. Simpson was awarded custody of his children mainly because a court-ordered psychological test showed that he is a loving father. It should be noted, however, that the same test also showed that he was a loving husband. <laughs> Following the surprise withdrawal of his nominee, Anthony Lake, President Clinton has chosen acting CIA Director George Tenet to head up the agency. Now all he needs is the approval of the House, the Senate, and this Chinese guy. <laughs> In Washington this week, the Supreme Court is having arguments on whether or not pornography should be banned from the Internet. According to veteran court watchers, eight justices are leading toward a ban, with one against. Gee, I wonder which one would be against <laughs> a ban on pornography. How do they say now there's... I don't want to know. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the University of Nebraska, computer scientists have developed a version of the Internet that is up to 100 times faster than the current system. According to analysts, those using the new system to log on to America Online will now be disconnected in three one-thousandth of a second. You ever get on the computer? Do you know anything about them? <laughs> In Congress, members of the House Women's Caucus say prosecution of sex offenders must be the Army's top priority, despite concerns of racial insensitivity on the part of investigators, which would be the second priority. Then I guess the Army's third priority would be defending the nation. That would, you know, that'd be third. Well, this coming Monday is Oscar night, and three films, The English Patient, Secrets and Lies, and Shine, are locked in a tight race in the category, Best Picture There's Not a Chance in Hell I Will Ever See. <laughs> <clears throat> a person who suffers two sharp, powerful blows to the head within a short period of time can suffer brain damage or even die. This according to a new study in the medical journal, Duh. <laughs> <laughs> the 
This week, a London tabloid published the first exclusive pictures of Michael Jackson's baby, secretly taken by a guest at the King of Pops Neverland Ranch. Upon seeing the pictures, Michael said, this is not my baby. Then quickly added, I'm not saying he isn't hot. He's hot. It's just not my kid. I'm not saying he's a, he's a very sexy infant. It's just not mine. I would love to have sex with him. He's just not my child, is all I'm saying. This week, pilot Linda Finch marked the 60-year anniversary of Amelia Earhart's attempt to fly around the world by setting out on her own round-the-world flight. Finch took off Monday from the same Oakland, California airfield as Earhart and hopes to reach Europe by next Wednesday. By Sunday evening, if all goes well, she plans to have mysteriously disappeared forever. <laughs> In music news, Dr. Jack Kervorkian has performed and recorded a one-hour CD of his own jazz compositions for the flute. You know, Dr. Kervorkian, I've, uh, I've listened to your CD, and I've got some advice. Don't quit your day job, all right? You know, murdering old people? Stick with that. Stay away from the flute and stick with the, uh, the murdering old people. This is my advice. A report by Assistant Treasury Secretary Jim Johnson shows that the arrest rate for church arsons is more than twice the national average for arsons in general. Note to self, start setting fire to something aside other than churches. <laughs> Earlier today, the biggest auction ever of Beatles memorabilia took place in Tokyo. Among the one-of-a-kind items on the block were Paul McCartney's birth certificate, a white Mercedes-Benz owned by John Lennon, and rarest of all, a photo of George Harrison not looking haggard. <laughs> Have you ever seen one when you think about it? And the British Sunday Times is reporting that Belgian doctors have accidentally cloned a human being. The human being? You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> well, Reader's Digest has released its 1997 list of the best and worst places to raise a family in the United States. The best place? Sheboygan, Wisconsin. While the worst place in America to raise a family? The Neverland Ranch. <laughs> Fake news, our top story tonight. This week, after months of speculation, sitcom star Ellen DeGeneres finally admitted that yes, she is gay. Inspired by her courage, today, diet guru Richard Simmons admitted that he is really, 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 really gay. <laughs> In a radio interview this week, First Lady Hillary Clinton scoffed at conspiracy nuts, as she called them, obsessed with whitewater and compared them to cult figures, or cult groups rather, fascinated by UFOs and the Hale-Bopp Comet. Although she did concede one point of similarity between whitewater and Heaven's Gate, 39 castrated dead people. <laughs> Two professors of medicine at Rutgers University say they are developing a pill which can give women orgasms without having sex. <laughs> Read all about this revolutionary discovery in my new book, The World's Most Dangerous Drug. <laughs> The women clapped at the premise, and the men clapped at the punchline. <laughs> the White House says that surviving relatives of those who died in a 40-year-old federal study which allowed men infected with syphilis to go untreated will get an official apology from President Clinton. According to the president, quote, if not for the sacrifices of these brave men, I would not be alive today. <laughs> On Capitol Hill this week, the House unanimously passed a measure which would prevent prison inmates from being counted as household members. 
for purposes of food stamp eligibility. Note to self, uh, find new way of fraudulently obtaining food stamps. <laughs> Recently, a group of Orthodox rabbis declared that other branches of Judaism are, quote, not Judaism at all, thus challenging the religious status of millions of American Jews. This week, that statement was rejected by Reform leader Rabbi Don Schonstein, who said, quote, our legitimacy as Jews flows from the richness of our Jewish lives, the strength of our Jewish communities, and most important of all, our deep and abiding belief in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Recent photos sent from the Galileo space probe orbiting Jupiter's moon Europa suggests that it meets the conditions necessary to support a primitive life form. Just what kind of life form? You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey's longtime boyfriend, Stedman Graham, has written a new book called You Can Make It Happen, A Nine-Step Plan for Success. Step number one, become Oprah Winfrey's boyfriend. <laughs> then the other eight are just hang around. Last weekend in Washington, a new museum dedicated to broadcast jerk... Bah! What the fuck was that? Last weekend in Washington, a new museum. Uh, my farewell performance. Last weekend, last weekend in Washington, a new museum dedicated to broadcast journalism open, where visitors can appear on camera and pretend they are news anchors. So far, the museum has been visited more than 200 times by Tabitha Soren. In St. Louis, Missouri, a father who lost joint custody of his two sons after undergoing a sex change operation now plans to ask an appeals court to reconsider its ruling that gave sole custody to the boy's mother. Hmm, I wonder who's going to win this case. The mother of the two children or the guy who had his penis twisted into a fake vagina? <laughs> It's a tough call. You got the guy who fashioned the vagina-like thing, and then you got the money. <laughs> In Michigan, state historical commission officials say they will not interfere with the building of a new major sports stadium, even if construction unearths historical artifacts. However, state Indian affair officials say that if relics from a Native American tribe are found, they would like to have the land set aside and designated as a sacred tribal burial ground slash giant casino. <laughs> the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has warned that an industrial camera stolen from a Montana company could pose a radiation hazard if its casing is open. Oh. Note to self, uh, after show, remember to close the casing on that industrial camera that I, uh, I borrowed from uh, a thing while I was in Montana. <laughs> and uh, finally, in California... <laughs> and finally, in California, pet owner. Pet owners can now take their canine friends to the world's first doggy wedding chapel, where dogs can actually be married in a civil ceremony. The ceremony ends when the Justice of the Peace says, you may now sniff the ass. <laughs> See you next week. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald. And now the fake news. Our top story tonight. Embattled House Speaker Newt Gingrich may finally have solved 
his financial troubles. On Thursday, Gingrich announced that former Senator Bob Dole has loaned him the $300,000 needed to pay his ethics committee fine. And today, more good news for Gingrich. Dole has already forgotten he loaned him the money. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Gingrich this week criticized Attorney General Janet Reno's decision not to seek an independent counsel to investigate Democratic fundraising, even comparing her to notorious Watergate figure John Mitchell. Reno called the comparison ridiculous, saying, quote, For one thing, John Mitchell did not have a mustache. <laughs> In an interview this week with Diane Sawyer, Mafia turncoat Sammy the Bull Gravano revealed that John Gotti once considered trying to buy a presidential pardon for $5 million. According to Gravano, however, he and Gotti were too afraid to get involved with, quote, those kinds of people. <laughs> According to O.J. Simpson niece Terry Baker, when O.J.'s mother, Eunice Simpson, first heard about the slaying of Nicole Brown, she exclaimed, he did it. Reach for comment, O.J. said, my mom was just guessing. I hadn't even told her yet. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary of State Madeleine Albright has announced that she will represent the United States this summer at ceremonies marking the transfer of British Hong Kong to Chinese rule. President Clinton also plans to attend the event, but he will be representing China. So. <laughs> <laughs> this week as America marked the 50th anniversary of Jackie Robinson's entry into Major League Baseball, there was a sobering reminder that racial prejudice in sports is not yet a thing of the past. In a shocking move today, all but one of the 125 playing members of the Professional Golf Association has signed a petition to ban African-American golfers from the tour. <laughs> In Los Angeles this week, actor Arnold Schwarzenegger underwent heart surgery to repair a faulty heart valve. Doctors were concerned because during a routine examination of Schwarzenegger, they got a little turned on. <laughs> they became concerned, you know, and something like that will happen, you know. <laughs> Pause for thought for whatever. <laughs> In Indiana, the state legislature has approved a law requiring professional hypnotists to be trained at accredited institutions and certified by the State Medical Licensing Board. Hmm. Note to self, cancel plans to tour Indiana as hypnotist this summer. Oh, wait, wait. Ignore a previous note. Instead, note to self, get fake hypnotism diploma and proceed as planned. <laughs> According to a survey in the new issue of Men's Health magazine, men are more likely to procrastinate than women, except when it comes to having orgasms. <laughs> Last week in Tampa, Florida, William Santiago, a mail carrier for 27 years, was fired from his job and now faces up to five years in jail for keeping two magazines which had been sent to a non-existent address. Postal officials admit that they could have let him off with just a warning, but then he wouldn't come back someday and shoot 30 people. So. <laughs> they decided to be a little strict. <laughs> Last week in Kansas City, two people that were two home, two people. <laughs> oh, drats. <laughs> two... <laughs> two homeless people who met at a soup kitchen were married in front of homeless guests at the very same soup kitchen. For those who want to give the couple a wedding gift, they are registered at Kansas City's District 5 Recycling Pen. <laughs> In South Dakota, inmates at the state penitentiary say that a new policy which allows officials to read their mail 
is an example of the routine violations of individual rights in prison. A better example would be the daily anal rapes, but I guess they want to start off small and then <laughs> and work up to the, the daily anal rapes. You know, they'll start off with the reading their mail, you know. With the resignation of two police officers in Virginia's Vermont, the city's 2,500 residents are now left with only one policeman. Note to self, uh, if I get fired for cursing on the air last week, drive up to Virginia's Vermont, hypnotize the remaining policeman, and loot town. <laughs> yeah, that's a And finally, the votes are in, and Entertainment Weekly has chosen its funniest man alive. And who is the funniest man alive? You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> Congratulations, Frank Stallone. And that's the way it is. Good night. Our top story tonight in court documents made public this week, independent counsel Kenneth Starr told a federal judge that Hillary Clinton is now a, quote, central figure in the Whitewater criminal probe. Reacting to the news, President Clinton called the investigation a partisan witch hunt, vowing, quote, if the first lady is somehow convicted and has to go to jail, I will do everything in my power to wait two weeks to start dating. <laughs> Meanwhile, FBI Director Louis Free said this week that Attorney General Janet Reno might have a conflict of interest in her investigation of Democratic fundraising. Free also pointed out that Reno might have a conflict of interest between her X and Y chromosomes. <laughs> There was some good news for Michael Kennedy this week when the parents of the teenage babysitter with whom he had a five-year affair decided not to pursue criminal charges. However, a lawyer for the babysitter's family called Kennedy a, quote, sick, pathetic individual, while the county district attorney described him as a, quote, alcoholic cradle robber. The only kind words came from his uncle, Senator Ted Kennedy, who called him, quote, an inspiration. <laughs> Real estate mogul Donald Trump announced this week that after three and a half years of marriage, he is seeking a divorce from wife Marla Maples. According to Trump, Maples violated part of their marriage agreement when she decided to turn 30. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable. At their annual convention this week, board members of the National Rifle Association narrowly elected actor Charlton Heston vice president of the powerful gun lobby. According to Heston, his first priority will be a push to legalize the hunting of, quote, damn dirty apes. <laughs> In Alabama, a new state law will dramatically increase the penalty for bouncing a check. Note to self cancel summer vacation plans in Alabama, find state more accommodating to the Norm McDonald lifestyle. <laughs> On Wednesday, world chess champion Garry Kasparov tied Deep Blue, the IBM supercomputer that can examine 200 million positions per second in the fourth game of their six-game series. Earlier in the week, Kasparov admitted he made a catastrophic blunder in game two when he failed to force a draw by moving rook to e8, opting instead for a Karo Khan defense that soon transposed into a Pribble defense, which, after Deep Blue moved bishop to e7, gave him the advantage with his knight position. With all due respect to Mr. Kasparov, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm Norm Dial. Now the fake news. Our top story tonight, court martial proceedings are set to begin Tuesday against Air Force Lieutenant Kelly Flynn, the nation's first female B-52 pilot. Flynn is accused of conducting an adulterous affair with a married man, as well as having a brief fling with a second airman and then lying about it. An Air Force prosecutor called her, quote, a sexual predator, while her commanding officer called her a, quote, lying sex addict. Meanwhile, President Clinton called her. <laughs> Earlier this year, the Liga Group paid out more than $750 million in a court settlement when it was admitted that its cigarettes are addictive. And this week, the tobacco company unveiled its new warning label. It reads, warning, don't try to sue us. We don't have any money left. <laughs> Yesterday, the House Budget Committee approved an outline of the deal between President Clinton and congressional leaders to balance the budget. But both sides caution it is not set in stone. In order to become official, of course, it must still be approved by this Chinese guy here. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a... What, boo, what the hell? <laughs> no reason to boo anything. It was reported this week that Simpson prosecutors Marsha Clark and Chris Darden often passed sexually explicit notes back and forth at the trial. Notes which discussed each other's, quote, turn-ons. And according to the notes, both Dar Darden and Clark are turned on by the same freakish thing, Alan Dershowitz. <laughs> Meanwhile, O.J. himself may have some explaining to do. For months, he has denied hiding financial assets, including valuable sports mementos, from the Brown and Goldman families. But earlier today, Simpson pal A.C. Callings was stopped as he tried to leave the country. In the backseat of his Bronco, police found O.J.'s Heisman Trophy, disguised with a tiny fake beard. <laughs> According to prosecutors in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Henrietta Collins, a 90-year-old widow, was bilked out of her life savings by the trustees of her estate. Note to self, forget trying to bilk Henrietta Collins out of her life savings. Some dirty bastard got there first. <laughs> This week, talk show host Kathy Lee Gifford addressed published reports that her husband had an extramarital affair, saying, quote, Frank did and always does what is right. Kathy Lee's statement has been widely interpreted as a public admission that her husband beats her. <laughs> In San Francisco last week, a birthday party for one of the area's leading political figures attended by the city's mayor, sheriff, and members of the Board of Supervisors culminated with a performance in which a dominatrix used a razor blade to carve a satanic star into the back of her male partner, then urinated on him before finally sodomizing the man with a liquor bottle. After learning of the incident from press reports, San Franciscans expressed shock and outrage that the liquor bottle was not recycled. <laughs> In his new film, Legionnaire, action star Jean-Claude Van Damme will join the French Foreign Legion. In the film, Van Damme is a playboy in 1920s Paris who flees a mob boss after falling in love with the man's mistress. Also, although it doesn't say anything here about it, uh, I'll bet there's plenty of, uh, of kicking. <laughs> Tonight we are proud to present a new feature on Weekend Update. In their own words, as you remember last month in the televised town meeting on kids and drugs, President Clinton moved Peter Jennings and the audience as well when he said, quote, I've received many letters from five-year-old kids around the country telling me that they are frightened and asking for my help. Earlier this week, the White House released the text of some of these letters. Walker D. of Connecticut, a five-year-old child, writes, Dear Mr. President, 
When the Republicans are finished wasting taxpayer money on their whitewater witch hunt, perhaps they can join you in your efforts to protect Medicare and the environment and to expand the earned income tax credit. P.S. Paula Jones was asking for it. Here's one from, from Elizabeth A. of Long Island who wrote, Dear President Clinton, Newt Gingrich is a bad, bad man. Also, Paula Jones was asking for it. In their own words. Under a new law passed by the state assembly, effective next year, Michigan will set aside an allotment of hunting licenses for blind people. <laughs> this after years of relentless lobbying by deer. <laughs> Good news for Hawaii. Next year, the state will receive $20 million in federal funds to help teach poor children how to read. Oh. Note to self, swindle poor Hawaiians out of $20 million by pretending to be a guy who teaches reading. <laughs> Note to self, before I start, also learn to read. <laughs> that will help give the scam what we like to call credibility. <laughs> That's a big word. A new survey by the Washington Post reports that D.C. Mayor Marion Barry's popularity among city residents has dropped to its lowest point in five years. However, Mayor Barry insists he has no interest in polls or, for that matter, anything else that isn't crack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really has no interest in it. How good are polls going to do it? Finally, reports out of Germany continue to indicate that David Hasselhoff is a major recording star in that country, where his concerts routinely sell out and his albums turn platinum, which once again proves my old theory, Germans love David Hasselhoff. <laughs> and it's been fun, folks. Thank you. Weekend update with Norm McDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald. Now the fake news. Our top story tonight. Uh, this Thursday in an Arlington, Virginia courtroom, sportscaster Marv Albert accepted a plea bargain in his trial on forcible sodomy charges. This following revelations of Albert's compulsion for biting women, three-way sex, and wearing panties and garters, said Albert about his decision, quote, at least I've still got my dignity. <laughs> Attorney General Janet Reno said this week that she is fed up with Republicans complaining to the press that she has not named an independent counsel to investigate President Clinton's fundraising. Said Reno, quote, if these people don't like the way I'm doing my job, let them come talk to me man to man. <laughs> well, the White House is an empty nest this week following Chelsea Clinton's departure to begin studies at Stanford University. A wistful President Clinton says that while it's difficult to see his daughter grow up, at least now he'll feel less guilty about hitting on her friends. <laughs> According to the U.S. Bureau of the Census, California's population is expected to grow nearly 18 million by the year 2025. Also by the year 2025, it will be much easier to find a vacant apartment in Mexico. <laughs> In international news, French President Jacques Chirac met this week with NATO, Gen NATO Secretary General Javier Salona. During their meeting at the Elysee Palace, the two discussed possible reasons why Marv Albert would dress up in lingerie and bite women on the back while another guy watched. <laughs> After closing out a successful first season, the WNBA is considering several changes to improve the level of play in the league next year. Among the proposals 
extending the playoffs, increasing salaries, bringing back the three-point line, and replacing all the female players with guys. <laughs> well, as you're no doubt aware, Elton John's musical tribute to Princess Diana, Candle in the Wind 97, has become the fastest selling CD in history. Well, in Dayton, Ohio, a local music chain had a wonderful idea to donate all its profits from the single to a local AIDS group. However, in a tragic piece of irony, Weekend Update has learned that the local AIDS group now plans to spend all of the money on landmines. <laughs> what a world we live in. Dirty, dirty landmines. Richard Thomas of Chicago is taking a novel approach to getting his wife Sally to quit smoking. He is suing her in U.S. District Court asking a judge to order her to quit. Legal experts say that considering all factors, Mr. Thomas actually has a very good chance of never having sex with his wife again. <laughs> According to published reports, Michael Jackson's wife is now pregnant with the pop star's second child. Asked why he decided to become a father again so soon, Jackson explained that his seven-month-old son is starting to lose his looks. <laughs> Next month, the U.S. Postal Service will begin issuing stamps depicting Dracula, the Mummy, and Frankenstein's Monster. The stamps are part of a new series called People Who Abbott and Costello Have Met. <laughs> According to new medical research, crack babies are as happy and healthy as normal children. You know, that's amazing, you know. Because I thought they'd be much happier with all that crack in their system, you know? They... <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Former President Ronald Reagan is selling his Santa Barbara ranch to the federal government, which will turn it into a California state park. In what can best be described as a sweetheart deal for Reagan, he will get $5 million for the 700-acre ranch, and he will still think he owns it. <laughs> The rich get richer, you know? Ridiculous. <laughs> David Kaczynski, the brother who turned in Unabomber defendant Ted Kaczynski, said he plans to share the million dollar reward money he will receive with the bombing survivor. He says roughly $400,000 will go to the bombing victims, and the other $600,000 he will blow on whores and cocaine. <laughs> And in Central California, investigators have convened at the Tulane Canal to find out what killed 1,600 birds and over a million fish. Experts say ammonia poisoning is the probable cause, but if you ask me, what really killed them was the paparazzi. <laughs> in a recent interview, Paul McCartney confessed that Bob Dylan turned the Beatles on to marijuana. In return, George Harrison turned Dylan on to looking old and haggard. <laughs> well, finally, our congratulations to musician Ike Turner, who recently got married for the 13th time. The ceremony marked the first time that a minister performing a wedding has ever asked, does anyone here not object? <laughs> And that's the news, folks. Good night. I'm Norm McDonald. Now the fake news. Our top story tonight, yesterday, just yesterday, in a letter to Congress, Attorney General Janet Reno absolved President Clinton of almost all charges of campaign finance reform. According to Reno, there is no evidence he misused his office to raise money, improperly allowed contributors to stay overnight at the White House, or sought contributions in exchange for political favors. You know... It's hard for me to believe this, but for Janet Reno to send this letter, I guess it must be true. The president's sleeping with her, too. It's, it's, it's beyond comprehension, but 
Earlier today, some 600,000 members of the Promise Keepers, the evangelical men's group, convened in Washington, D.C. for a day of prayer and repentance. Oh, no, I, I promised to go to that thing, and I forgot. Damn it to hell! It's my wife's fault. She didn't remind me that dirty... Oh, well. More bad news for O.J. Simpson. This week, a Los Angeles court ordered him to turn over his Heisman Trophy to the Goldman family. In addition, the same court may order Simpson to surrender a coffee mug inscribed, World's Greatest Husband. <laughs> a new development in the Marv Albert story. This week, his accuser, Vanessa Perhatch, decided to go public, allowing news agency to print her name and picture. Following the publications of the photograph, legal experts were left wondering, who was the real victim? <laughs> Not easy on the eye. In a recent interview on the subject of parenting, Jane Fonda admitted that it wasn't easy to talk to her children about sex. But she felt it was necessary because she did not want them to learn about sex the way that she did, by reading North Vietnamese propaganda pamphlets. <laughs> We're not going to forget that. Hanoi Jane. It was a bad week for the restaurant chain Hooters. The company has been forced to pay $3.75 million to settle a sex discrimination suit brought by male job applicants who claim that its policy of hiring only women is unfair. The settlement was hailed as a landmark case for guys who try to ruin everything. <laughs> you want to go to Hooters and a dude shows up at your table, you know? <laughs> Action star Arnold Schwarzenegger is reportedly planning to appear in an upcoming production of the Broadway musical The King and I. Schwarzenegger says that in contrast to other actors' portrayals of The King of Siam, his will be really, really horrible. Also in entertainment, the play Hiroshima, a tribute to the victims of the first atomic bomb, with music and singing by Yoko Ono, opened in New York City this week. One tearful Japanese survivor of the attack who attended the premiere called the play, quote, the most horrifying experience of my life. <laughs> and in entertainment news, Ellen DeGeneres and lover Anne Hesch have announced that they want to have a baby. However, their plan has hit a snag. They are both women. <laughs> it is not possible to have a child. Well, Bart, the 1,800-pound bear who co-stars with Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin in the movie The Edge, reportedly earns a whopping $10,000 per day as a Hollywood actor, a small amount of the grizzly's income goes toward the preservation of bears' natural habitat. Bart spends the remaining money on bear whores and cocaine. <laughs> and on a happier note, in Massachusetts, the 119-acre Dunn Pond State Park has the state's first nature trail designed for the handicapped. Along the trail, you will find a rich variety of birds, lizards, and insects, all of them handicapped. So, it's not really a very good trail, you know? <laughs> and next summer in Battle Creek, Michigan, Kellogg's will open Cereal City a new $18 million theme park. Note to self, start buying up land next to Cereal Theme Park, then open Milk Theme Park. <laughs> and watch the money roll in.
Well, finally, the Guinness Book of World Records announced this week that Gull Mohammed of New Delhi, at 22.8 inches tall, is the shortest man in the world to have Eddie Murphy's head. <laughs> And that's it, folks. Thanks a lot. I'm on the dollar on the fake news, our top story tonight. Does President Clinton have a bent penis? Well, according to a doctor who examined him last week, the president's genitals are, quote, completely 100% normal. It should be noted, however, that the doctor who examined him also has a bent penis. So. <laughs> I may color his findings a little. While this controversy raged, the president himself was on a state trip to South America, where he met with various leaders and repeatedly stressed his strong ties to the region. Finally asked to elaborate on these ties, Clinton replied, Are you kidding me? My, my brother Roger was a huge Coke dealer. <laughs> As his last stop on the trip, the president met in Buenos Aires Thursday with Argentinian President Carlos Menem. During the meeting, Clinton asked Menem to continue with economic reform and protect democratic freedoms. Menem, in turn, asked Clinton to show him his bent penis. <laughs> According to a new survey by the Women's Vote Project, women would be more likely to vote if they could send in ballots by mail or if polls were open longer. Also, more women would vote if you were permitted to bake your vote. <laughs> they like to bake. <laughs> Rejecting conspiracy theories that President Clinton killed Vince Foster, a report out this week from independent counsel Kenneth Starr has officially concluded that Vince Foster took his own life, among other things, the report cites evidence that Foster was deeply depressed in the days leading up to his death. Although the report does concede, Foster was deeply depressed because President Clinton was trying to murder him. <laughs> Visitors to Yellowstone National Park are being advised to carry pepper spray to defend themselves against bears. According to park officials, pepper spray is inexpensive and it is far more effective against bears than their first idea, which was uh, honey spray. That's... <laughs> that didn't work out at all. That worked completely counter to the sources in Hollywood. <laughs> Report the on-again, off-again relationship between actor Johnny Depp and supermodel Kate Moss is on again, and that Depp and Moss are now engaged. According to her friends, Moss is so excited, she hasn't eaten a thing in 23 years. <laughs> In other entertainment news, a religious group in Chile is trying to ban a new Claudia Schiffer film which features explicit lesbian sex scenes. According to the group, sex between two women is an abomination before God, almost as blasphemous as sex between a woman and David Copperfield. <laughs> I don't know which is worse, which is more of an abomination. Well, the 1997 World Series began tonight with the Marlins beating the Indians 7-4. to four. Joining us on Weekend Update with an analysis of each team is a baseball legend and a dear, dear friend. Please welcome Hall of Fame broadcaster Harry Carey. Hey, Harry. Hi, everybody. Harry Carey here. I got to tell you, folks, it looks like we've got a very exciting World Series on our hands. The American League is represented by the Cleveland Indians. And for the National League, the Florida Marlins. It sure is exciting, Norm. Yeah, well, it certainly, certainly is, Harry. Now, who do you like in the series? It's tough to say, Norm. On one hand, you've got the Marlins. Now, that's an odd mascot, a Marlin. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Of course, pound for pound, it's the smartest fish in the ocean. With its sword-like snout, it'll carve your eye out and not think twice about it. <laughs> Norm, to this day, if I walk into a seafood restaurant and I see a marlin on the wall, I just grab my wife and leave. Is that a fact, huh? Of course, on the other hand, you have the Indians. 
a group of untrustworthy savages. You look away, next thing you know, they steal your land. That's true. Well, Harry, you're talking a lot about the mascots now. What about the players? They won't be a factor, trust me. <laughs> Hi, Norm. You ever been alone in a room face to face with a marlin? No. No, no matter where you go in the room, its eye follows your every move. You should try it sometime. It's a rush. I should know. I used to hunt them. Really? You, you hunted marlins, huh? No, Indians. <laughs> I've got a whole closet full of scalps at home. They're just collecting dust. The government stopped buying them years ago. <laughs> hey, Norm, you interested in buying a scalp? Well, I mean, uh, I guess... Uh, it's a simple uh, yes or no question. <laughs> Well, what does this have to do with the World Series? This man? sale isn't going to make or break me, Norm, so don't jerk me around. <laughs> do you want to buy a scalp or not? No, I don't, no. Fine. Just take my card and give me a call when you want to get serious. Uh, okay, thanks. And, and peruse through this when you get a chance. What's that? A catalog of all the scalps available. Good Lord. I got all of them. Apache to Zuni. Oh, well... You got, got any mohawk in there? Oh, Norm, if I had a mohawk scalp, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. <laughs> I'd be relaxing on a tropical island. Why is that? Because they're highly valuable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for stopping by. Mohawk, you can't find one. <laughs> no? No. Harry Carey, everybody. Come to Come to Exotic dancers say city ordinance requiring them to keep four feet away from their customers will put them out of business in Shoreline, Washington. Or as I now refer to it, Nazi Germany. <laughs> Quite a world we live in. And in Oklahoma, prison officials are considering an interactive video system for parole board hearings, which would eliminate the need for inmates to travel to hearings from prison. Inmates say they will go along with the video idea, but they will not rule out raping the camera guy. <laughs> and in Idaho, a $5 million project to fix cracks in the Dwarshock Dam has been a huge success, according to officials from the Army Corps of Engineers. However, the dam could easily have been fixed at a far more reasonable price tag, according to this beaver. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to agree to disagree. Finally, the Rolling Stones are back on tour again, and Keith Richards says that he is thrilled to still be doing what he's been doing for 25 years. Cheating death. <laughs> Weekend update with Norm MacDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald. Now the fake news. Our top story tonight, tomorrow. Chinese President Zhang Zemin begins a week-long visit that could define U.S. relations with China for years to come. President Clinton plans to ask Zhang for several things, including human rights reform, trade expansion, and a Chinese herb said to have the power to straighten a bent penis. <laughs> Well, it's official. Sportscaster Marv Albert, convicted last month on assault and battery charges, will serve no jail time. But the big story was outside the courthouse, where the second accuser from his trial, Patricia Maston, showed her face in public for the first time. This new development had legal experts asking once again, who was the real victim here? <laughs> Incidentally, Ms. Maston will be represented in her civil suit by feminist attorney Gloria Allred, who is also quite unattractive. So. No box of chocolates, that one. Well, this week, Attorney General Janet Reno charged software giant Microsoft with trying to monopolize access to the Internet and has asked a federal court to fine the company a million dollars per day. Analysts say that at this rate, Microsoft CEO Bill Gates will be broke just 10 years after the Earth crashes into the sun. 
uh, he's got a hefty pocketbook. According to new medical studies, exposure to secondhand smoke dramatically increases a non-smoker's risk of getting heart disease and lung cancer. Jubilant tobacco company executives say the study proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that non-smoking can kill you. <laughs> that one wasn't very good, but <laughs> try to laugh anyway, because it helps Farley have a little rest. <laughs> Dr. Jack Kervorkian announced this week that he will start to offer organs taken from his suicide patients to people who need transplants. In addition, Kevorkian promised that anyone who does not get a life-saving organ will receive a free murdering. <laughs> and in London, British scientists have created a frog embryo without a head, a breakthrough that could lead to the production of headless human clones to provide organs and tissue for transplant, as well as horrific nightmares for the rest of my life. <laughs> I can't deal with this kind of stuff anymore. Well, in Maine, political activists are trying to push through a constitutional amendment that would expand voting rights for the mentally ill. But according to insiders, it's really just a ploy by supporters of Ross Perot. They... <laughs> Okay. And in New Orleans this week, Doonesbury creator Gary Trudeau was honored by the Drug Policy Foundation, a group which seeks to legalize marijuana. Also honored this week by the foundation, weed. <laughs> yeah, they honor that every, every week. It's a multiple honoree. A Minnesota man is being sued by a woman who claims that he promised to marry her, but called off to the wedding after he convinced her brother to give him a kidney. Don't I know it. <laughs> well, according to fire department officials in Wisconsin, Many of the state's communities can't find enough people to be volunteer firefighters. As a possible explanation, officials cite the extreme danger of the job combined with the complete absence of pay. <laughs> Finally, in, Miss in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a man allowed his eight-year-old daughter to take the wheel of his car and an accident ensued that damaged seven other cars and injured six people. Which once again proves my theory, women can't drive. Okay, folks, that's the news. Thank you. Top story tonight, last night, exports caster Marv Albert and fiance Heather Faulkner appeared on 2020 with Barbara Walters in what Albert admitted was an uphill battle to have a really hot three-way. <laughs> Earlier today, following two weeks of provocation by Saddam Hussein over UN re weapons inspection, President Clinton has issued his clearest warning yet to the Iraqi leader. The unusually frank, strongly worded letter reads as follows, quote, should your government persist in flouting international law, I will have no choice but to order military action which will be both swift and devastating. Of course, when the time for military action comes, I may simply panic, flee to England, and smoke dope until the whole thing's over. <laughs> but then again, I may not. More followed from the recent conviction of British au pair Louise Woodward on murder charges. This week, her attorney, Barry Sheck, lashed out at the legal system, saying, quote, what kind of sick society do we live in where an innocent girl is sent to prison while a double murderer like O.J. Simpson goes free? <laughs> kind of a... <laughs> Meanwhile, O.J. Simpson's Brentwood Estate officially went on sale this week with an asking price of $3.9 million. 
According to realtors, some of the home's highlights include a newly renovated gourmet kitchen and a luxurious math master bathroom with separate sinks for murderer and murderee. <laughs> Murderer, murderer. <laughs> On Capitol Hill this week, 17 Republican congressmen formally asked the House Judiciary Committee whether there is sufficient evidence to begin impeachment proceedings against President Clinton. In response, the president said, quote, Hey, you know who would have the answer to that question? Vince Foster. <laughs> With the release of over 100 hours of videotape of President Clinton and campaign fundraisers, the pressure continues to mount on Attorney General Janet Reno to name an independent counsel to investigate the president. In addition, some senators are said to be furious that instead of watching the videotapes, Reno has been taping over them with episodes of Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> On Tuesday, New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani cruised to re-election with 57% of the vote. The mayor credits his victory to strict enforcement of quality of life ordinances, while loser Ruth Messenger blamed her defeat on low voter turnout by aggressive panhandlers and squeegee men. <laughs> she was expecting them to show up strongly. This week, the crew of the trouble-plagued Russian space station Mir took a much-deserved break using their onboard computer to do some shopping on the Internet. Among the cosmonauts' purchases this week, a VCR, an exercise bike, and a new space station. <laughs> the Franklin Mint has announced plans to market a Princess Diana porcelain doll. And the timing of the move has made some people very unhappy. Critics charge that the doll is in poor taste, and they're even more upset about the Franklin Mint's other new offering, porcelain landmines. <laughs> you can play with them together if you want. <laughs> this week, a milestone in rock music, REM drummer Bill Berry has announced that he is quitting the band. Barry, who has been with R.E.M. for 17 years, says the decision to leave was entirely mutual between himself and his giant eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> he talked it over and then decided it was best for both of them. A sad story from the world of entertainment this week. Talk show host Ricky Lake had to get rid of her dog Dudley after the pooch became too aggressive with her seven-month-old son Milo. A clearly saddened Lake said, it broke my heart to get rid of that dog, but he was delicious. <laughs> she ate a whole dog. In aviation news, a new study suggests there might be more survivors of plane crashes if all seats were equipped with airbags. According to the study, this is especially true for plane crashes under 50 miles per hour. <laughs> the other one that doesn't do much good. In Waukesha, Wisconsin, five grade school students have been charged with holding down a boy and giving him a wedgie, tearing his underwear in the process. The students now face three-day suspensions as well as fines of up to $140. Meanwhile, the boy himself faces more wedgies. <laughs> In New Zealand, a convicted swindler who weighs 670 pounds has been sentenced to house arrest because he is too big for prison. According to prison officials, it took four inmates just to rape him. Good <laughs> man. And finally, when Richard Gere made his first appearance recently on The Oprah Winfrey Show, the two got along famously. But all that may change when the actor hears about this month's Oprah Winfrey book club selection. It's called, What Really Happened by Richard Gere's Gerber. <laughs> Crazy.
Okay, folks, that's the news. Have a good day. Weekend update with Norm McDonald. I'm Norm McDonald. Now the fake news, our top story tonight. As the war of words between the U.S. and Iraq continues to heat up, President Clinton today sent his latest blunt message to Saddam Hussein. Quote, as our two nations appear headed toward military conflict, let history record that all this could have been avoided with a simple $50,000 contribution to the Democratic National Committee. <laughs> the blood is on your hands. In Sacramento this week, jury selection began in the trial of accused Unabomber Ted Kaczynski and appears to be moving briskly. In fact, lawyers for the defense had only one question for each prospective juror. What is your mailing address? <laughs> Just days after she was freed by a Massachusetts judge, British nanny Louise Woodward has received numerous job offers from families seeking an au pair. Although her attorneys refuse to say precisely who has made these offers, speculation has surfaced that Jean Benet P Ramsey's parents are expecting. Yeah, they're going to have a little bundle of joy there in their life. <laughs> a frightening moment this week for First Lady Hillary Clinton. Her plane, en route to the former Soviet Union, was forced to make an emergency landing when it was discovered that a frayed wire in the engine was causing serious malfunctions. The president was said to be furious and demanded an immediate investigation of what went wrong with Operation Frayed Wire. <laughs> There was outrage in Detroit this week when Dr. Jack Kevorkian helped a woman commit suicide in a local church, leaving her body inside the church building. According to Kevorkian, murdering people in his van has almost completely lost its sense of blasphemy. <laughs> Hello, how are you? In a statement with profound legal implications, the FBI announced this week that for the first time, its experts can now identify an individual with 100% accuracy through his DNA. And really, when you think about it, the timing could not have been better, said former football great O.J. Simpson. <laughs> he was good on the gridiron. A celebrated Hollywood cosmetic surgeon whose clients include Michael Jackson, Phyllis Diller, and Joan Rivers has been accused of fondling patients while they were under anesthesia. The case has legal experts wondering, who is the real victim here? <laughs> In Bridgeport, Connecticut, Robert Auger, who suffers from emphysema, blew up his home trying to smoke a cigarette while breathing with an oxygen tank. In response, the R.J. Reynolds Company has presented him with its Lifetime Achievement Award. In Washington, D.C., several local activists are trying to gather enough signatures by December to put a medical marijuana initiative on the ballot. Meanwhile, one local activist is trying to do the same thing for medical crack. The WNBA officials expanded to 10 teams this week, adding franchises in Detroit and Washington, D.C. But before you get too excited about the new additions to the league, remember, all of the players are still women. <laughs> they stink at basketball, that's the problem. <laughs> Other than that, it'd be a good, you know, good game, but they're, they're all horrible, so it makes for a, kind of a boring game. Four Wisconsin men have been charged with felony hate crimes after burning a man's buggy simply because he was Amish. If convicted, the men face up to 25 years in prison, but furious Amish leaders say that is not enough. They want the dunking wheel. <laughs> a Tampa businesswoman who bought several of Princess Diana's gowns as a collector is now putting them on display to raise money for charity. However, her method of display is being described by many as inappropriate. Still, for four bits, you know, it's a good deal. 
According to a recent study published in New Choices magazine, the more household chores a husband does, the more likely his wife is to report having good sex. The article explains that when a man does a substantial amount of housework, it gives his wife some time to go out and find a real man to have sex with. <laughs> And in Sugarland, Texas, a Florida-bound Amtrak train collided with the back of a tractor trailer carrying bagged sand. Thankfully, no serious injuries were reported. However, the accident did draw protests from the group People for the Ethical Treatment of Sand. <laughs> yeah, those people. <laughs> and finally, in Burien, Washington, elementary school teacher Mary Kay Letourneau pled guilty this week to having sex with a sixth grade student whose child she bore in May. Miss Letourneau has been branded as a sex offender, or as the kids refer to her, the greatest teacher ever. <laughs> and that's it, folks. I'm Norm MacDonald, now the fake news. Our top story tonight, this week, the Clinton White House angrily denied charges that burial plots in Arlington National Cemetery were being handed out as political favors. Although presidential spokesman Mike McCurry did acknowledge that it is not easy to explain the tomb of the unknown Asian contributor. <laughs> This week, an angry President Clinton demanded that Congress stop dragging its feet on something he has long championed, a medical bill of rights for U.S. citizens. In all, there are ten items in the President's Bill of Rights, running from number one, a rich, satisfying sex life is the foundation of good health, <laughs> to number ten, a straight penis is not a privilege, it is a right. <laughs> Toymaker Mattel has decided to give its Barbie doll a new and less curvaceous body. This in response to criticism that Barbie's current measurements, if she were six feet tall, would read an unrealistic 38, 18, 34. <laughs> Feminists are applauding the move, but personally, I think that instead of all this petty tinkering with measurements, they should just make her six feet tall. <laughs> Speaking of toys, this year's survey of the 10 most dangerous toys has been released. Topping the list this year, Tyco's new Throat Clogger Upper. <laughs> the FDA is considering approval of a new highly effective treatment for baldness. The drug Propecia has been shown in trials to grow thick, luxuriant hair. Although there is a downside, it only works on ears, noses, and backs. <laughs> In next week's Life magazine, pop star Michael Jackson appears in a pictorial with his infant son. The photo showed Jackson changing, feeding, and cradling the baby boy in what Jackson himself promises will be Life magazine's sexiest issue ever. <laughs> First Lady Hillary Clinton has been out of the country this week visiting the remote region of Siberia. Said the president, quote, when the cat's away, the mice... Oh, who am I kidding? The mouse screws plenty of women even when the cat's right here. <laughs> has the lure of the almighty dollar finally made, made us forget the true meaning of Christmas? Well, in my opinion, the answer is yes. When you consider that it's not even Thanksgiving, but the Christmas issue of Black Tail Magazine is already on newsstands. <laughs> Shame on you, people at Black Tail Magazine. <laughs> Wednesday on CBS's This Morning program, correspondent Eleanor Mondale went toy shopping with Cato Kalin. According to producers, it was part of a new segment on the show called Let's punish the audience. <laughs> well, now there is finally a matchmaking service for dogs. 
At Happy Animals, matchmakers guarantee to find your dog a perfect mate based on height, weight, age, and breed. So far, the dog dating service has had a 100% success rate because, according to its founders, any dog will have sex with any other dog. <laughs> An extremely rare albino lobster found recently in Maine will not end up on a dinner table, but will instead live out its days in a private aquarium. The lobster has already been flown from Casco Bay to Texas, where it will be lovingly cared for by rock legend Johnny Winter. <laughs> I'd like now to make a correction to a story that we reported earlier tonight. It seems that the Christmas issue of Blacktail is not yet available on newsstands, I'm sorry. So far, it's only gone out to those of us who subscribe. <laughs> Our apologies to the editors of Blacktail, and keep up the good work, boys. <laughs> on Wednesday, NASA launched the Space Shuttle Columbia on its 87th voyage. This trip by the shuttle will feature the first spacewalk ever by a Japanese astronaut who will get to take in the unique perspective of Earth from space. Gee, I wonder if there's any chance he'll uh, take a picture. <laughs> I'm Norm McDonald, now the fake news. Our top story tonight this week, Attorney General Janet Reno announced she will not name an independent counsel to investigate campaign fundraising by the president. At a press conference, she said, quote, the decision was mine. It was based on the facts, on the law, not pressure, not politics, not any other factor. She was then led away at gunpoint by the first lady and nine Chinese guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Clinton was in Akron, Ohio this week, presiding at a town meeting about race relations in America. The president chose Akron as the site of the meeting, partly because it is the home of the Coming Together Project, an organized effort to end racism, and partly because it is the home of Suzanne Rosenberg, an old classmate from Oxford the president still has sex with. <laughs> The trial of Unabomber suspect Ted Kaczynski underway. His lawyers are making arrangements now to move their client's 10 by 12 foot shack into the courtroom. After the trial, the cabin will be carefully repacked and moved to Hollywood where it will serve as home to actor Mickey Rourke. <laughs> well, a sad story from Britain this week. According to the Earl of Spencer, several intruders have recently broken into his family estate in search of souvenirs from Princess Diana's grave. But the Earl says he knows just how to protect the site. Landmines. <laughs> this week in the former Soviet Union, an American engineer for a San Diego-based company was arrested and charged with spying for the United States. Russian authorities say he was caught attempting to smuggle out their secret formula for alcoholism and despair. <laughs> A new study has found that Americans are in the best of health and the worst of health, with lifespans that can differ by as much as 40 years from one U.S. locality to another. The longest lifespans are found in Stearns County, Minnesota, while the shortest lifespans are found in Drunk Driverville, New Jersey. <laughs> In January, production will begin on the seventh season of MTV's The Real World. The seven young people appearing in the series will represent different backgrounds, ages, religions, and sexual orientations. However, this year, they will share one trait in common. I will hate them. <laughs> In Maryland, Bell Atlantic plans to offer a service that would allow customers to learn the address of any listed telephone number in the state. Critics say the service would be an invasion of privacy, while proponents of the plan say it will help them invade people's privacy. <laughs> On Tom Snyder this week, after Tony Danza said he thought the recent open display of affection by lesbian couple Ellen DeGeneres and Anne Hesch in front of President Clinton was extremely disrespectful. On hearing the comment, President Clinton responded, Someone should tell Tony Danza to shut the hell up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Playing in a music store in New York this week, Kenny G set a world record by holding a saxophone note for 45 minutes. While he did warn spectators that it would be quite boring, it should be noted that it is every bit as boring to hear Kenny G play different saxophone notes <laughs> for 45 minutes. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight this week, following revelations that he lied about his military service, the body of former diplomat and Democratic contributor Larry Lawrence was removed from Arlington Cemetery. Commenting on the affair, an angry President Clinton called it, quote, the most outrageous deception regarding one's military service since me. At a press conference this week, FAA officials studying last year's crash of TWA Flight 800 announced that they have pinpointed the cause, a frayed wire leading from the jet's fuel tank. According to the investigators, the wire became frayed when it was struck by a missile. <laughs> that'll, that'll fray a wire. Golden State Warrior star Latrell Sprewell, suspended last week for attacking and choking his coach, has hired attorney Johnny Cochran to represent him. At a press conference Tuesday, Cochran said that his client did not choke his coach and even offered a reward to help find the real chokers. <laughs> President Clinton met this week with Chinese dissident Wei Zhengxing, a leading advocate of democracy in China who had been imprisoned and tortured for nearly 18 years. However, the meeting had to be abruptly cut short when the president learned that Mr. Zhengxing is broke. At a congressional hearing this week, Republicans blasted Attorney General Janet Reno for her refusal to investigate White House fundraising. Responding to criticisms, Reno said, Wow, some congressmen must really want their homes firebombed and run over by tanks, huh? <laughs> well, our best wishes to North Carolina Senator Jesse Helms, who at 76 years old recently underwent surgery to repair an old knee injury. Doctors say the senator will no longer need his cane for walking, but Helm says he will continue to use it to scare off young whippersnappers. <laughs> Nothing better than a cane to scare off young whippersnappers. This week, computer hackers broke into Yahoo, the Internet's most popular website, and vowed to unleash a crippling computer virus if a fellow hacker is not released from prison. Experts warn that, these, that catching these cyber terrorists will not be an easy task and may require the cooperation of both nerds and geeks. <laughs> well, President Clinton received an early Christmas present this week, an adorable Labrador puppy. And presidential historians say that it will be good for his image. According to these scholars, in comparison to a male dog, the president's sex life will seem relatively normal. <laughs> well, this week, after a Los Angeles restaurant refused to seat him, O.J. Simpson demanded and got $500 in compensation. In addition, the restaurant must now offer separate murderer and non-murderer sections. <laughs> Who are safer drivers, men or women? Well, according to a new survey, 55% of adults feel that women are most responsible for minor fender benders, while 78% blame men for most fatal crashes. Please note that the percentage in these pie graphs do not add up to 100% because the math was done by a woman. <laughs> For those of you hissing at that joke, it should be uh, noted that that joke was written by a woman. So, <laughs> now you don't know what the hell to do. Eh? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't hire women. <laughs> Tel Aviv's Hard Rock Cafe, which is sandwiched between the sites of two gruesome suicide bombings, has closed due to slumping tourism in Israel. Also contributing to the closing of the Hard Rock, the restaurant's best piece of rock memorabilia is Henry Kissinger's ukulele. <laughs> so. 
Well, a sad story from the world of entertainment this week. Actor Bob Bell, better known to millions as Bozo the Clown, has died at the age of 75. Commenting on his passing, President Clinton said, quote, you know, for $50,000, he can be buried next to JFK. <laughs> Finally, in entertainment news, there are rumors that actor Don Johnson is dating 71-year-old San Francisco socialite Denise Hale. An observer who spotted the couple necking in a restaurant will have trouble getting an erection for the rest of his life. That's the news, folks. Thanks.